Welcome to the Speed Chess Championship Super Swiss. I'm Grandmaster Robert Hess. Alongside me, the one and only Grandmaster Maurice Ashley. Maurice, yo, yo. we're in for quite a day today, aren't we? This is going to be fun. This is going to be fun, like a wild Bronco ride from start to finish with some of the best players on the planet just duking it out. So let's do it. Um, yeah, it's going to be great. And we'll show the format quickly for all of our viewers. It is three minutes, zero second increment. Okay. People are going to be flagged left and right, 15 rounds of action. So we'll see if the cream will rise to the top and the best players will make their way into tomorrow's 16 player knockout because that's what they're playing for. First place here is $3,500 in addition to the money that they'll win in the speeches championship itself which is a $100,000 prize pool. So, Maurice, big money at stake. It's good money. It's good money. They really want to get to tomorrow, though. Let's be real. Uh, that's what <laughs> it's all about. You don't want to just, like, play, and then they say, go home. So they definitely want to get to tomorrow and, and play. And we've, we've got stuff happening already. I see you've jumped into a wild one. Yeah, we have Hikaru playing. He doesn't even need to qualify. He is the winner of the last speeches championship, but he plays in all these events. And right now, you said it's a wild one, Maurice. Stuff happening down the H file. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> but, you know, Hikaru is a great defender, so I figure he's going to slow down whatever happens here. But, man, how did White get such a wild and awesome-looking attacking position? I mean, Whoa. this just looks tremendous. Did you see the bar? It just I just saw the bar go nuts, too. <laughs> <laughs> the more I looked at it, the I was like, this position looks sexy, man. A knight's dropping on D6 and your king can't run. How do you oh stop God. this madness? Yeah, that takes away the F7 score. So maybe HG, HG, knight D6. And then queen H7 check is coming. This looks like just brute force checkmate. It, it, it can't be white's move, right? Is it white's move? It, it's white's move. The last move no, was no. on E4 by Hikaru. I mean, is he crazy? Like, <laughs> and he looks like, uh, I mean, it looks like death. It looks like it's over. And we can do a look in with him so we can see his thoughts because, uh, you know, we have him on screen here. Queen takes E6 check. He's looking. Oh, gosh, the king in the corner. This looks – he's holding on by a thread maybe? But, yeah, it looks like maybe the best moves were not played there. I mean, the night – the idea you showed, Robert, looked like it was over. Yeah, it really did, honestly. Like, over, over. Just stop the king from running and – wait. So White hasn't – I mean, this is this is the game position we're looking at. Well, you know, or these are his, this is his analysis. No, well, that was his analysis. Oh no, so it's actually it's actually happening, and it's we'll actually happening. And this king is somehow escaping despite the fact there's a rook on h7. He didn't take it because queen h5 would have led to a checkmate on h7. So Hikaru, seeing all the defensive possibilities, just brings his king to g8, and he's mm. winning. So that bar unbelievable, swung. unbelievable. <laughs> Hikaru is like Houdini. That's what he should be. He should be called because how did he get out of this nastiness? Man, and now a rook sack on G sack and a bishop sack <laughs> to follow. What, what is this guy doing? There are no more right. pieces. There are no, no more there's... pieces. That just you doesn't can, make any sense. You can what just happened <laughs> makes no sense. I mean, it just you, makes no sense. You can bring one more rook into the game, but after King takes G6, you're just playing with a rook and a queen against how many pieces? Three minor pieces for black and an extra rook and this pawn on e2 if you ever need to throw it down to e1 to distract white's forces. No, this is too much. That was ridiculous. <laughs> Seriously, you have Hikaru Nakamura praying for life and you start sacking all your pieces, not seeing anything. That was crazy. That was... <sighs> Murray's. we'll go back to that moment very quickly because it did feel like... He went wrong, uh, Victor Skliarov, Skliar, excuse me. He had this pawn h5. Hikaru pushed the pawn to e4, and just hg, hg, and even queen h7 check with knight d6 to follow just feels no good, doubt. right? That, I mean, that just looks like a ridiculously good attack, and your bishop's hanging. How do you say? I mean, this is just slaughter. <laughs> this, is, I mean, this is pure beatdown. In the meantime, he just wins the game. Yeah, uh, easily now because the guy has not enough material. You can't just attack with a queen and a knight. Uh, no. Not enough. And that check just killed him. Wow. That That's sense. sad. The guy had Hikaru, but I can tell you, I had Hikaru also. Remember from the 2003 US Championship, I mm -hmm. had him busted to all rights and I blew it too. So I can't <laughs> say anything. The guy is a magician at getting out of those positions. So that's that. He is, and we just saw Maxime Vachel Legrave. He won his game with the black pieces. He's up a queen. So now we've seen uh, two super GMs up way too much material. Let's go to the game between 
uh, Mishani, that is Alexei Serrano, who won his junior speeches championship match yesterday. Well, here go his pawns, Grace. This is just too many uh, passers. Yeah, those pawns are runners. <laughs> They're both going to become queens like, <laughs> at some point. Like, what do you, what do you think is this there, is all about? Is there a potential stalemate, though? This king on h4 has no move. So that's like the one thing I'm keeping in the back of my mind is, is there a way for black to just like give up? If you take the rook, like queen h, oh, it's not stalemate anymore. Yeah. Because you it. give up the g3 square. Now he left the rook on, so it's not even an attempt. Dream on. Both of them queen, like I said. <laughs> There's a mate <laughs> coming in your face. No problem oh. king there in that position. Game is over with queen g3, mate coming. And this one, I think white probably should resign. Unless, Wait. how much time does black have? Black has 6.7 seconds left. And white is Yan Napanashi, by the way. So not every day you see Yan down a queen. But Yan is dead. I mean, first of all, oh. queen g4 was better in that position than this line. Oh, uh, might, why is he, he taking so long? <laughs> they drew. They drew. On, well, you got to know your technique. Did you see the queen g4? It was over. Queen g4 moved the king. was mating three. What was the problem there? Yeah, Not in this position. If you go back. A, Even that was mate. That's mate as well. I'm, I'm talking about this one. When you go back a couple of moves, Robert. Yeah. Go back a couple. Uh, go. Now go forward. Go forward. Go okay. forward. Now right here. Before you move the king. Before king. Queen g4. Move your king mate. <laughs> done. That's. <laughs> I teach my kids that stuff, by right? Like basic technique. Oh Cut the guy God. off, move your king mate. It's over. Instead, he blows that one. <laughs> and you're Man, these guys are with four panicking. seconds left. You cannot not win that game, right? You have Come to on. win. Four seconds. <laughs> I'd be pre-moving him. He it wouldn't, I wouldn't need any time. One second. Just pre-move and the guy's over. That was bad. Jeez. That was that was real bad. Um, that was terrible. <laughs> Queen and I win the game. All right, this looks like a new game, new opening. Hikaru doing his thing with the white pieces. I always like this as black, but that last move F5 looks a little bit, mm, all right. I guess it's survivable, but I don't, it's not, I'm not a fan. Yeah, it's always risky on the light squares, E6, D5. You know, at some point a queen D5 could happen. Even a C5, bishop C4 with a knight G5 you know, in the thinking. future. Yeah, Ooh, just, it, E4. It feels very risky. I, uh, that's an interesting move. E4, expanding and trying to break up the pawn structure. It's so funny, Maurice, because I'm looking at more like aggressive moves and a card just plays E4, queen D2, rook D1, and the evaluation bar likes his play. So what do I know? Goes right into an ending. The problem is unwinding that queen side. The bishop on c8 needs to get into the game somehow. So how do you get the knight out the way, get the bishop in, get the rook in? I don't even know how to get the bishop in. I thought just move your knight somewhere. You know, just move it wherever you like. But then where does your bishop go on the next move? The guy's going to double on the d file. And you're going to be without anything. And look at Hikaru, just <laughs> pieces just go. Knight's thinking yeah. about e6. This is just juicy. He doesn't mind if he just I mean, very simple, straightforward move. Knight to e6 that hits the bishop, hits the rook, and Black just doesn't have any good looking moves. You can move this knight out. I think you're right, Maurice. Knight c5 or knight to b6. Move his rook e8. Whoa, 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 whoa! What's this? <laughs> this is asking for it. Uh, knight c7. Anybody? That looks like it's on the docket. I actually like the move c5. He carries by so positionally. Before that, I'd like a, a c5 and a check on f7. But Ikaru is just saying my position's better. I got the two bishops. I'm going to open up this diagonal and you're going to cry. Like literally you're going to start crying. I feel like crying just looking at this position because as Look soon as this bishop. knight moves from C3, that is an unopposed bishop on a long diagonal. Robert, those are bishops we dream about. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I look at that bishop like, ooh, yum. Nobody can oppose him ever. Your dark sword bishop is gone. There's got to be a sack on F6 or something. <laughs> like, that's the first thing we think about. How can I make my bishop so much sweeter? But it maybe it doesn't quite work. I think knight d5 actually looks very strong as well here. Yeah. Knight d5. It, and if you take my rook, I play knight takes F6. That just looks crushing. And he plays it. I mean, just. Yeah, baby. That's what I'm the, talking about. Knight d5 looks nasty. You take a knight takes, and then your knight on d6 is going to drop straight. Mm. You know, you never let guys like Hikaru Nakamura off the hook, Robert, because then nope. they just turn into monsters. And that first game he survived, now he's thinking maybe he'll win all his games. So you're saying that everybody should blame Viktor Sklyarov for yes. not winning that first game. Okay, I'm well, with you there. Victor, you might be a nice guy. I don't really know who you are. <laughs> but you blew it! You blew it! You yeah. never should have let Hikaru turn into this monster now. And he oh, takes in d6 here. That's two pieces for a rook, and that's too much for Hikaru. Just trade on e6. You can even take on h7 some of these lines, mm. but mm. 
no fun, no fun at all. So why don't we move Free to Wesley So's game because that looks like fun. And okay, hey, there's a king on F3, but this king on G8 is getting mated first. That doesn't look like any fun. Why did you turn to this game? The guy's <laughs> getting it's just mate. It depends on play perspective, G6. man. Well, you could play you could play you know king f8. You're not going anywhere. You're you're getting killed. So you gotta play g6. Oh. And then ooh. <laughs> That's oh. sneaky. That is sneaky. Unfortunately, it's mate in three. Takes takes queen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then bye. So, yeah, queen g6 no, check did... after king e8, and then queen g7 check, and you win the first rook. Wasn't queen f6 mating? Like queen f6 and then rook d8 was oh I saw rook, rook on e3. e3. It was no rook on d1. <laughs> I want to drop my queen. That would have been ugly, dude. That's that would have been really bad. That, I I actually, was, on d3. I'm listening to you and I'm like, well, that sounds like a great mate, but the problem is queen f6, king e8. There's no rook e3 to d8 with checkmate. No. Yeah, but I I would I wouldn't even have a move. Like <laughs> I would have just screwed it up. I would have played rook g8, but queen h5 check looks problematic. It's funny because Maurice, that's happened to us in so many blitz games where you just forget your pieces on a different square. You like you go rook e3 to d8, and then your pawn's like, uh, Maurice, didn't, aren't you the one who calls the hustlers out? What are you doing over here? It's funny. A lot of times you don't actually see the board, you feel the pieces. Yeah. So you think the piece is just there. And then you look at the board and you go, wait, my my eyes should have seen where the piece is. But you exactly. feel the board more so. So anyway, that one was uh not oh. what he played, thankfully. No, not at all. So let's uh, keep on going here. We have Big Fish, 1995. That's a Vladimir Fedoseev. He has the black pieces against Nodarius B.I.G. I have no idea who that is, but I like the I love username. the name. Yeah, you I don't love, love the, the position, name, though. though. Position looks uh, a bit bad. Slightly. He's, <laughs> he's down a, a queen for a rook and one pawn. You know, there could be some chances here. If only you could organize your forces properly. These, these pieces... Oh, look at that. He put a bishop on D8. I doubt this is going to make any sense, mainly because the bishop on d3 can't teleport. I mean, the bishop right. on e2 can't yeah. teleport. If that bishop could get somewhere, then we'd feel good about his position, but there's nowhere for it to go. I'm also looking at the clock, Maurice, and Black has doubled the time here. So up a queen, winning on the clock, no way. Oh, this is an interesting try, though. Like, this rook's just sort of roaming around Black's king. And at g4, I like what White's doing. He's trying but it still looks quite hopeless. Yeah, that last move really did it. If you have to play G5, yeah. then you've got no plan. You're done. No, you're totally busted. He resigned. He didn't even continue the game. So, yep, credit to you, man. You got me there. So uh, let's uh, keep on looking here. We have so many different games. We have Robert Chess move. I believe that's Robert Hohanesian. He has the black pieces. And whose pawns are better? I mean, this is pawn E7 versus pawn A2. This position is a wild <laughs> one. I Black is... Black has got this advanced pawn, but I mean, he's got it. Why didn't he keep his bishop? He's got to give up that bishop, right? Well, for that, and this like, rookie one, he but takes rookie his bishop. one, rookie oh. one is sweet. Oh my gosh, he just wins for black. Wait, you black didn't take the is... pawn. You could take so, the no time. This is just a, a scramble. It's really interesting to see how. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, queen wait and queen five, and then take. Wait the a minute, <laughs> black is back in business. <laughs> You know, it's really interesting to see how these players are not familiar with like a bullet type of style of play, right? right. Like just win the game instantly, pre-moving, knowing what to do. They're panicking in time pressure right now. Maybe they're just warming up. This one is just a quick mate, so good technique yep. shown to finish off that game there. We need to follow one from start to finish, Robert. Something that shows some real skill on the part of, of the players because they're not really showing their best stuff right now. No, they're struggling. Let's uh, follow Penguin GM1. That's Andrew Tang. He's taking on Grandmaster Mikhail Kobalia, very strong Grandmaster from Russia. And we have a look in at Andrew's uh, stream as he plays. So he plays his London system as per usual. Marisa, I can't stand the London. I really can't. It's, it's just so boring. Uh, but, <laughs> you know, if you want to duck anything, duck and dodge theory, you go into the London system. I've seen Magnus do it. Magnus B. Hikaru, that's uh, not Hikaru, Fabi, a great game in the Clutch Chess uh, Championship. That was just amazing game coming out of this setup. So can't say anything about it. If the world champion is feeling it, then we need to shut up, right? Yeah, for sure. And Andrew Tang just signed with an esports organization, Maurice. So uh, he's probably feeling on cloud nine, pun intended. Awesome. So that's the... Uh, the org he <laughs> signed with but uh you know he's feeling good he's playing his london uh as we return to uh, 
uh, us here. You know, he has a better position. He's more space. He has control of the E file. You can put a nine on E five at any moment. So I actually do prefer White's position at this point. My problem with Black's position is where's the counterplay? B five is a typical way of doing it. So he just he just needs to throw that pawn forward as soon as possible. Like just go. I, I'd be sacking that pawn. I used to play this as Black all the time. And you cannot let white generate some energy on the other side. A knight on g5, queen on g, queen on h4 is mate in your face. So that queen is sidestepping. But you need to get in b5, b4 and get your play to slow. And there he goes. He's playing the b5. I think this is important. If we just have to time it because white wants to, white wants to play queen to h4. So that's g3, h4, and then knight over to g5. The fact that white has to slow down right now that's a good sign for black i think i agree but he is going to put a knight on c5 which is another pain because the knight e5 looked pretty good the knight c5 now that's firmly under my control that's an outpost for my knight you're not making progress as easy for black but i like it he's going his knight to d6 so kabalia i'm telling you i'm telling you that, this is good this is the good stuff black is playing real chess it's that veteran understanding isn't it maurice by kabalia that's right you could switch if you want to but because you played b4 your pawn on c3 is backward forever it's very easy for black to get counterplay as well. Black has the e file, uh, the a file with white. So, yeah, black is just perfectly fine. And white's king position is slightly dubious compared to black's solid rock. So I don't see anything. There's no sacrifices I can find for white on e6, something to juice up the position. And knight e4 can happen also at any time. So black can even sacrifice a pawn on that square in order to break through to the c3 square. This is fine for black. Yeah, this you is a called good it. chess position. You totally called it because you said the queen should have gone to h4 and gone for an attack. Then white started playing positionally, but unfortunately, this is a positional nightmare. You have the e4 square, the c4 square available to black's knights, and right now knight e4. I mean, you just put your knight in f3, of course, and bring knight to e4. And a big difference is that black can play f6 at some point to kick this knight on e5, where the knight e4 is that's just going to be a pain in your rear end for the rest of the game. You called it. Now this g4 move very important not to allow. The move, uh, the move, well, actually, now I'm thinking about it. I don't see any threats over there for it. <laughs> I, I don't see anything. I would take the A file right now. There he goes. Yeah. Like, yep. you need to play queen. Oh, your queen is tethered to the C3 pawn. And that was the point I was making, Robert. Yes, you get squares, but I'm not worried about my B5 pawn, but your backward pawn on C3 is forever. If you give away the file, I mean, you just gave away the file. Now you're really in pain. Rook's going to jump in. Look at queen. this positional juice that black is showing right here. It's amazing. And the queen go to h4 or to a8. Like you can choose your own adventure. It goes to h4. There might be a mate against this king. You made a point that the king didn't feel so good. Rook a2 check anybody? No rook a2 take on e2 and queen g3 check. No, hey, Maurice, this is... This was beautiful. Wait, I'm glad we queen? got to watch a great game from start to finish. Maurice, there was queen g3 check before playing Ooh, I like it. Two. I like that it. Nice, been... nice tactic, Robert. Oh, look at this. he wins the queen Ouch. anyway. <laughs> <laughs> this was sweet yeah, uh, now what's the time cool. situation black is oh, well ahead and no, winning forget it Let that was maestro Ooh. that that's what we want to see out of blitz calm oh positional God. sweet play that was so sweet i like your queen g3 uh that was definitely winning an exchange uh right away as well actually his move might be stronger robert because after king f3 here you have to take the exchange but yeah, the way he played it the position he's collapses so easily yeah, what a boss. Keep the queens on and just spat, spat. <laughs> let's, uh, let's move on from this game to the game between Gadakomsky, who's playing Wesley So. I believe Ooh. Tiger Schlapp is, is Komsky. Well, how much extra time does Wesley So need to win this position as black? Rookie well, one, though. Rookie one saves the day for now, but okay, this won't do it. <laughs> no. Yikes. How are, you, how are you missing one movers, Robert? Like one movers that that's just i don't get it i don't get it rookie one you you just saw that you nailed that right away just play the move how do you allow g3 to hang g2 to hang yeah that's that that of course he had no time really but he was getting felt like he was getting rolled over but he had a resource missed it and let's uh move to this game between serana and our good friend krikor mikatarian the grandmaster from brazil he's playing with the black pieces but he's down a piece right now Maurice. so this doesn't look he can cry this one, uh, cry me a river because this is over. Oh no, please don't play that move. <laughs> really? no, no, no. You, you're over. worried about a pin? I'm guessing. I'm, wor I'm worried about a pin. Your rook is not solid. Uh, yeah, it's time to resign. I mean, that's just, 
that one is hopeless. Another piece up uh, and a pass pawn running down the board. Can you say resign? Uh, I, I oh, he but... missed Bishop C2. <laughs> he missed Bishop C. Okay, I'm just playing. But Bishop C2 was a sweet little tactic in the previous position. This one is just blitzing through. Yeah. Oh, it's a time situation because he could have taken the bishop. But this is Vladislav Artemyev with the white pieces. I don't think he is in any danger of not winning this game considering just how strong he is. Pre-move H to H8. Just go. Too easy. <laughs> it's way too easy. <laughs> King D6, Rook G8. He doesn't even go for the pawn. Go back, go back, go back. I, I had in this, if you can, please. Just yep, back I up. Right. But, okay, after C6, King takes oh. Bishop C2. King takes C7. Wait, no, he has... That? He has rook. He has rook check, and rook over. I would have blown oh my that. Gosh. Oh, that would. I that think would. you had it though. Rook c five check first. Oh, rook c five check. Go. That's how you do it. There you go. Thank no, you. I cleaned you had, it up. You had this, Maurice. You had it. I ruined yeah, it for you. It up. You had That's it. that would have been sweet. I saw that bishop c two idea, and then rook c five. So he could have gained the tempo to play rook c five to then push. That's that's awesome. That's a good. That's a nice little by you. puzzle. Nice little puzzle we yeah. could put down there. Yep, and we still have wow, so many games left. Oh, that game is over. Just kidding. Valisov Kovalev wins with how many extra pawns? Four. I don't know if that's enough. Uh, let's go to another game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just trying to that's, click here. That's total slaughter in that position. Uh, why am I clicking on all these games that are done? So, man, this is fast and furious. It's hard to keep up. This this is really incredibly hard to keep up. Tomorrow, though, we'll have a little bit more sanity. Yes, right? we will. Because for sure. there's only 16 players. We'll be able to really follow people, especially if they're being knocked out. So we'll go round to round. We won't step on each game so much. But right now, uh, it's pure madness. Chaos. It is. And Maurice, you know, after three rounds, we do get a, a break here, a fair play check, just to make sure that everything is going smoothly. So we're going to take a quick breather. And when we come back, we will have round four and more for you in store. Wow, I didn't even mean to get in a rhyming spree. That just happened accidentally. But <laughs> we're going to have more chess for you when we return in a few minutes.
And today and tomorrow's action will determine one of the other 16 competitors facing Hikaru Nakamura in the speech as championship. Maurice Hikaru, he's a beast. Do you think there's anybody in the world at this point who can take him down in the SEC? Uh, is Magnus playing? Uh, presumably he will not be, but he's always invited. Well, if he's not playing, then obviously Hikaru is always going to be considered the clear favorite in any online blitz event he plays in, period. Hikaru has been waiting for this moment, basically. He has trained his whole life for this pandemic. Like his whole life was for this <laughs> pandemic. It's like incredible what has happened uh, for him in, all, in, in his Twitch stream and for online play. The, it's just extraordinary. The hours of bullet that people used to say, Dude, why are you doing that? You are wasting your life. Hikaru was like, <laughs> look at me now, fools, haters. It's very it true. Done. And we are looking at him as he is streaming, as he usually is. He's signed with TSM. He's been crushing all of these online events. It's It worked out pretty well for him. Of course, nobody wishes the pandemic upon anybody else, but Hikaru Nakamura, he has been thriving in what has been a tough time for the world over. I think that it's necessary for you to think about life that way. You never can control what will happen in life. So whatever it is, adjust and move on. Adapt, adapt, and change. That's what we have to do. And Hikaru has done that. He's thriving right now. And I have to say, we're lucky as chess players to be able to do what we do, Robert. Like, you're sitting at home, I'm sitting at home, and we get to talk about the game we love so much and watch beasts like Hikaru Nakamura get it done. For sure. And... Uh, well, I'm looking across the games here. We have so many. In addition to Hikaru playing so many elite players, we have Maxime Vacher Legrave, we have Alexander Grishuk, we have Alexei Shirov taking part, Wesley. So I have MVL's game pulled up in front of us, Maurice, and it looks like the D3 pawn was just captured, but I'm a bit worried about this king on G8, not to mention that there could be a pin down the D5. Well, anytime a knight is sitting on F5, you're going to worry a little bit. And it feels like there's some tactical possibilities, maybe. But that e5 pawn is just rock solid in cement on that yeah. square. Black brings the rook over. Now, is there really? He's going queen g4. I mean, he's going for the attack. That's his idea. This right guy now. found that that fast. That's impressive. <laughs> rook d1 I traps the queen. Oh no, this b3 is hanging. B3 is hanging. I got too excited. Okay, but what's the deal? How do you defend your position if g6 happens? What's the idea? It looks like you're creating a hole in the dark squares. So well, maybe there's I got to deal with mate, right? First of all. So, okay. That something bad looks like something could happen, but where's the tactic? What where, I'm looking for, Maurice, is like a rook d1, like a knight e7, take my knight, give me the e6 square with check. Let me take on e5. Let me just throw all my pieces at you and checkmate you. I don't know if any of it works, but that's what I would do in this blitz game. That was a great bluff. I mean, the way you said that, I believe you, even though I'm thinking, <laughs> yeah, right. I got a rook f7 at the end of that. I mean, there's rook b1 on the board, and I, I am not sure anything you just said works. He's just taking on b3, and and he's doing yes, exactly yes, what you yes. said. <laughs> Look at this. I mean, is but the thing is, rook f7, rook f7 is going to happen. So if you just take on e7, <laughs> and then you play your queen e6 and i play rook f7 but what I'll, do you have i'll take you on d8 and my queen will take on e5 and i'll mate you in the dark squares that's like man my... that that is <laughs> that <laughs> is <laughs> here it is like both of us disagree <laughs> it's all happening folks it's unbelievable okay white have a perpet because that is, okay, white white is uh white is asking for it white mm -hmm. is asking for it but this this is a very hard move, actually, to deal with. You're going to have to give up that rook, it looks like. And he's doing it. Bishop c7. Right. You're and queen now you can check it. Knight g8. Then there's knight g8. And then you give up the rook. But then the queen comes back. And yeah, after it. all is said and done, white has... White is down two pieces for a rook, period. That's, that's the end of it. Can the e-pawn... <laughs> you see, he shut down the bishop. I was going to say, can the e-pawn do anything? Because the bishops are looking like monsters in that position. And you have you know, to worry about it. You just take it to pawn. Maurice, it's one of these games where I should have just left the board after he played the sequence. We wouldn't focus on the result. We just focus on the fact that I said there was a sequence of moves he could do. They look cool and they're not going to work out. I mean, Black's just winning. <laughs> He's trading queens yeah. off. He's just... <laughs> He's exactly. I, I, when you said it, like I said to you, you said it, I was like, it sounds really good. It's, I, I didn't, I'm not sure I believed you because you said it so fast. 
But I have I have found the defenses as well, and this is just pain. That rook is yeah. not enough. Here comes the sea pawn. Charlie's going down the board. Goodbye. Right. Oh, mm -hmm. king, the king is trying to make it over. Uh, okay. The g pawn. What? Why did he leave the d5 square? I mean, that d5 square looks so beautiful. I guess he wants to put his knight there at some point. But also, Maurice, clock situation. MBL is up 10 seconds here. There's no increment. So I'm kind of glad we didn't go away from this one. It's going to be a scramble. This is this is not looking as clear as it used to. Now you actually have to play chess to win the position. The knight is the thing. Where does the knight belong, Robert? D3 looks like a sweet square. Uh, B3 is possible. But I really want to control the C3 oh. point. And he just dropped the G6 pawn. Yeah. And... For the and sake the of his, pawn. yeah, but this, can this can these pawns get there? Here we go. C three check seems logical, and then bishop comes, and then knight comes, and the mm -hmm. D three square oh, will be half. Move. Great move. Good move way to the anticipated one strong thing, and now you can't just go forward. You have to actually prepare this nonsense, and here he goes. But the bishop should be able to make it into the he's, game. He's playing a little bit too passive. I thought he should, put, should have put his bishop on b5 to give a discover check with his king. Okay, now, now he's weakened the dark squares, and he's got problems. He cannot make progress as black. Black has oh. blown it. Oh, and he pre-moved bishop at five, and he's dropping everything. Black is going down. Wow, and probably not have played a great game before that to fend off the attack. But unfortunately mm. for him, a little bit too slow in the end. And we, oh, I don't know why I keep turning in on games that are just so one-sided. That hurt to look at. That's Matthias Bluebaum beating uh, Etienne Bacro. Oof. That's a sad final position. Why do I keep looking uh, at games up a queen? <laughs> <laughs> Why is the people still playing? It was a draw. <laughs> oh, it was a, it was a clock issue. You know, <laughs> again, to me, three minutes, like I played a lot of bullet lately and yep. three minutes feels like a year. I mean, that's how yes. it feels. Like you give me, a, you give me time and I'm mating you, you're going to go, period. And like this position, like why are you still moving? It's going to be mate. Like that's, but I think the players are so used to increment robber that they're just, you're not feeling the, the time situation well. No, I'm, I'm with you. Uh, because the speech of Championship Grand Prix, those are all three plus one second increments. So you get that time back in the clock that you don't get here. And we do have Peter Svidler playing. So let's uh, get a look in at his stream because he's playing, he's streaming, he's giving his thoughts about his chess. And he has two and a half points out of four games. That's not a very good start for somebody who's so strong and powerful at Blitz. Well, you're going to drop a game or two, you know, just, you just got to get back in business and, and start rolling. So he's going to hope for that to happen. I'm impressed. Peter is not exactly a young spring chicken. If you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying, he's not, he's not old, he, he, but he's, he's not one of the 16 year olds or 20 year olds, uh, but he, he gets it done still. I really admire Peter for what he does for who he is. What a great guy. He, you know, he just as, one of the classiest human beings you'll ever meet. You won't say that about me, Robert, but you would say <laughs> that about Peter Spin. I mean, this hey, guy you know, is you, just super cool. You both are awesome commentators, and Peter, of course, is an amazing player. And by the way, speaking of not spring chickens, but still great players, we have Alexei Shirov taking on, hey, a, a spring chicken and Nodirbek Abusataro. So it's the youngster, the teenager from Uzbekistan, taking on uh, former world number three, number two. I forget how just how high Shirov got, of course. Uh, well, he, he never got his match. He never got his match with Gary, but we won't talk about that right now. He has a knight on f4 that also is looking pretty boss. Absolutely, and but this this clipping of his pawn on g4 has me concerned for his position. I, I feel like, well, this last move gives back the pawn on d3. He didn't take it. He didn't want it. Instead, was I was I wrong? He, he couldn't take on d3. No, he he could have. He just didn't want it. He just didn't want it. He just decided to play a la. Shira, fire on board, sacrifice whenever you can. That seems odd to me, though. It looked like a pawn. I thought you were going to ask grab. me, Maurice, to explain it. And I'll say, I can never possibly explain Shira's moves to anybody. And he can win the pawn now by taking on d4, going 92 check, and just winning the pawn back. But look, he doesn't, he doesn't want the pawn. He's anti-materialist. You know, Shira comes from the Lavian school, the Tal school, the Shabalov school. Those guys, material doesn't mean anything. That's what I grew up with studying back in the day in Brooklyn. That was the most fun I had in my chess growth is being able to study those kinds of games, even if they were unsound, they were so much fun to go over. And Shirov is from that school that you just play wild dynamic chess. Sometimes you get school though, when you do that, because people take your material and then they go, oh, why did you do all that? I got your stuff. Right. So I don't know if he went overboard there because right now he's down a solid pawn 
well, maybe not so obvious. He's got a great pawn on D3. We'll see whether or not the youngster can actually consolidate and show that he's all right. We also know that Sheriff is a beast in opposite colored bishop positions, that famous game against Topalov, and he was trying to play B5. So Abusadorov said, hey, not so fast. I'm playing A5. If you ever try to go B5, I'm taking on Bassan. So that's making Black's life more difficult. Uh, And how do you deal with this pawn on D3? Because you're right, Maurice. That pawn's a huge thorn in white side, and it's hard to team up on it. Yes, the problem for Black, of course, is that white is so solid and white's guarding everything. And now here goes this B4 thrust. And you're you're gonna see some kind of knight move happen eventually. I think this knight on E3 probably needs to just go to D5. Can we get that? Can we get away with that, Robert? Knight D5 and rook? Yes, you, he could have. Just now it was check. It was checked, so he absolutely could have done it and then taken on D3. He's still and then taken it. on D3, right? Oh, now he's done it. Now he's gotten back to it. And uh, if you take on... Oh, wait a second. You could... Knight at four? Knight takes at four? Hitting the yeah, rook, not... protecting the bishop? That's getting complicated. Now it is a little bit complicated. And also the B4 pawn is hanging. Ooh, he took on G. <laughs> but why can't we take it? You definitely can take either way. You can take on G2 or on D5. He takes on... He doesn't take, he doesn't take either. <laughs> <laughs> wow give the kids some credit all these pieces in black's position are just hanging and now yeah. it's all about the c pawn hanging as well it's one pawn extra for white and you you rook g2 is nothing we're not worried about that even in the slightest f5 is hanging he is all over shiroff right now man what amazing <laughs> play what calm like defense there like it looked like all of a sudden Shiro's pieces were coming to life you that's Alexei Shirov. you know he's capable of checkmating you at any moment and Abusatarov says yeah whatever man like, and now he has to resign he played his he's... rook check and uh <laughs> f4 is hanging thank you yep thank you for the free piece maybe he's too young to even know who Shirov is uh, I think he knows exactly yeah. who Shirov is but he just put a whooping on him that was the art of defense I loved what White did that game I'm glad we got to watch that from start to finish Shirov sure. went a little too all in in that game. He did indeed. And well, speaking of all in, I, I'm looking at this position and we saw Kabaya win a nice game against Andrew Tang earlier, but the beast from Lyon, that is Maxime Bashir Legrave. How many extra pawns does the guy need? He's a freaking top 10 player in the world. I'm, I'm thinking you could take off the, first of all, the B pawn on B7. That's just insulting. Like that should just get off the board. Take off the E6 pawn as well. And Black is still crushing in that position. So it, it doesn't, yeah, that was a good resignation. This one, this is the kind of desperation you have where you think you're going to play like your rook move and get a chance, and then the guy plays this move and then plays rook f2. No, but Maurice, he went rook h1 to the rook g1. He should have taken the g pawn. You always leave your opponent with a rook pawn in the rook ending. Agreed. Agreed oh 100%. Gosh. And now the king is cut off, and this is just basic, basic technique, boys and girls. Check him and wreck him. Mm-hmm. Move king, you get checked, put your king into g7, push the pawn, do it again, and then build the bridge, and that's the end of that. Oh, a trick! <laughs> <laughs> Little hustle oh. trick there. He was hoping for a pre move, he should have done it maybe one move later. The pre move where you're waiting for the, the guy to check you that was that was slick. We see like that in that. Washington Square Park in New York all the time, but I you're like making that. this point about playing rook g1 here. Right, because you take the G pawn, you leave him with the H pawn. This is a theoretical draw, and both this players a, know this. This is a dead, dead, dead draw. In fact, even the king on D7, further away, it's still a draw because you have to deal with this pawn. Well, actually, king H5, and it might be a little bit of work ahead there because you're going to play rookie too. But once the king is this close, there's no way you get this H pawn home. For sure. We still have a couple games left. It looks No, we don't. I, I do this every game, every single round. I click on some game. It's like the last one going, and it's just an extra cool. Game. Robert, forgive yourself. You can't predict. You know, you're, you're at the end of the game, the end of the round. That's what's going to happen. So It's true. Don't worry it's about true. it. Leave it alone. Uh, Ooh, here we go. We got... Look at this matchup. Hikaru and MVL, round six. You see? You were, you were chiding yourself, <laughs> and we get this matchup. This is going to be good. We're not leaving this one. So uh, remind me, Merz, this is a speed chess championship, you know, qualifier. This isn't actually the speed chess championship, right? Just just so we're clear. Yeah, you're trying to get in. You're trying to get. Yeah. Oh, you mean that this could be the finals? Oh, yeah. This could definitely this could easily be, the finals. be the finals. Yeah, this could be the super. Fi- this could be the finals of any major event on the planet, period. Mm-hmm. Like any one of them. Right. Including ones with Fabi, Magnus, you name it. These two guys, if they made it all the way, you wouldn't be like, 
they made it. What? Hikaru was <laughs> in the finals? NBA. No, you'd be like, oh, boss finals. Two of the best blitz players on the planet now playing each other. Although I have to say, online blitz, Maxim has not shown his best stuff. It's true. He needs to get going. I think he's maybe a little too focused on the candidates, which he's leading right now. So Hard to blame him to, for that, obviously. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that, but he, but I also feel like this is not his thing. Like it's Hikaru's thing. Right. And right now Hikaru is playing this position. I hate having stuff like this with, with black. I mean, right. I just hate it. And, you know, Hikaru looks locked in and we're going to get locked in on the analysis here because uh, the extra pawn, the material is in black's favor, but look at these juicy dark squares in front of black's king. And actually, how are you going to defend this knight on e5? Because white's play is simple. Queen e2. And if you play f6, I can just play g5 to remove one of your defenders, for example. Well, the threat d4. of... The, yeah. you, know, you played that first. The threat of d4 is hanging over his head right now. But uh -oh. well, how do you stop it? Period. Uh, you can't, because if you play d4 to block the threat, you open up the other bishop on the diagonals, and that's just... Game that's over. a rook. That's going to cost you a whole rook after bishop takes on e5. This is resigned. I mean, looks terrible. This just, that's it. He's given up a piece. He realized he, there's nothing he could do and it's over. And, oh, <laughs> and he's given up an exchange on top of it with Rook to F4 and, and <laughs> Hikaru said, no. No, uh -uh. I not even. It. And Knight takes E6 is just deadly next because you take on D5. He just throws in the towel. So not as exciting as we hoped for. I mean, it is exciting, but Hikaru just kind of crushed the guy. Didn't even give him a chance. And Hikaru right now is cheering I can see that he is cheering on his stream. He is thrilled about what he just did. When you crush Maxime Vachier Legrave like this, what was it, like 17 moves? Yes. It was 23, yeah. I was 23. It felt like 17. It felt like <laughs> just a straight miniature. Just we're, Look, Rook on A1 hasn't moved. Queen on D1 didn't move, Robert. <laughs> Nothing moved. It was right out of the oak. Now, who, who this one. Oh, this is Andraken with the white pieces against Grisho. What are we, in the Russian championship right now? You know, we just have... Great matchup after great matchup. And Rook D1, but 92 check. 92, 92 check, and you can go home. That's it. Oops. That's it. Why didn't he play Queen D1? He didn't want to trade Queens because he was down a pawn. But he had the two bishops. Queen well, D1 only move. I mean, why don't you play Queen D1? Right? I don't I understand. It. I don't understand. These, throw me in there, man. Jeez, what is happening? And he's getting... Robert, I know you could hang. You would you would not have played Rook D1 in this position. No, but what the worst part about this, Maurice, is look at White's time, two minutes and two seconds. Like, you should use some of that clock when you're up 40 seconds against Grishuk. Like I mean, you're down a pawn, but you got the two Bs. You know, you trade Queens and put a bishop on E4, and you, your bishop is attacking the Rook on D8 at the moment. Yep. You, you play the position. This is a position to play. You might be worse, but okay. But Rook D1 and hang 92? Not good. No. No, I'm not, next I'm not feeling I'm not feeling that as a super grandmaster. Well, we have not at all many more super grandmasters still playing. We have Wesley So with the white pieces here and up in exchange, but is white's king in more danger than black's queen is to checkmate on the uh, board next if you allow it. It's not about the danger, Robert. It's about all those pawns that are raining down the chessboard. Look at those black pawns. He's got <laughs> six of them to three of them for white. White is completely desperate, hoping that G6 does something lights up the chessboard that is a real threat that you have to consolidate against so this is the kind of position where you're worse but th the guy still has to find moves because g6 is coming and is it really going to be oh, enough and there goes e3 great. and did i there say goes, g6 was coming yeah like, there goes the evaluation bar maurice it just <laughs> shot up <laughs> <laughs> we knew g6 was coming and he just oh ignored it with this move Take on and a seven and a queen sack on e7 because the king mm. will have to take and you get a new queen. Just straightforward. Bam. Here it comes. Queen d8 check. That's it. Lights out. You take I, it f7 to check. I, I, I mean, I don't, I don't understand. This is this. Uh, uh, thank you. This is bananas. This is completely <laughs> bananas. You're getting, you're getting mated. <laughs> you can, don't think that that king's gonna survive. You're getting mated. This is not the kind of king march that works. And that's it. Wow. We said G6. You, you said I'm saying that kind of position where you have to deal with the threat at the moment. The threat is G6. And you just have to figure out what do I need to do? To me, I would play Rook E8, Robert. Okay. Get my so, Rook off. You could take on F7, mate. 
Yeah, but maybe maybe giving you that would have been would have been something as well. This is a, actually G six can also be made by F six, but there's a sacrifice on F six, so it means that your queen is missing. Ah, that's the that's, key piece you need to bring into the game somehow. Maybe queen c three uh, because after G six, now you have F six. You made a great point that you uh, and there you go. Just defend. And you're threatening queen g3 check to try to trade pieces off eventually, so you would have been rolling. Hard <sighs> for the old okie doke. <laughs> and it's easier, of course, said than done. I mean, they're playing in such immense time trouble with the pressure on them. And we see Karyakin against Fed uh, Fedoseyev. How many great matchups have we had in this round? Incredible. Of course, the more we go, the more it's going to be the case. Look at White try to prove that he's okay as the king despite having those extra pawns, there is no way you're going to make this king completely safe. Ooh. You might even get mated if you're not careful. But this one trades queens. Yep, and white's going to lose in time. So Fedosev This wins one on trades queens. Yikes. Oopsies. Let's go to the next one. We have uh, Parham. Oh, this is just a complete drop. But Parham is four seconds left. So Black's mm. just going to flag him. Mm. Pain. Yeah, just do whatever Pain. you want. Give up all your pawns. Just keep your rook on the board. Mm. The guy's got to just... pre-move every single move. <laughs> and uh, yeah, 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 there it is. That's what happens. Yeah, that's Been it. there. Been there. Okay, so we're getting down to the wire of this one. Oop, another game with a... Bites the dust. Oh, man. Extra queen at the end there. So, last... Nope. I think the games are all over. I'm clicking on games that are finished or are finishing as soon as I click them. So, Maurice, we are six rounds in the books. I'm just going to look down the standings there. Hikaru, Wesley So. Vladimir Fedoseyev. Oh, Joppy, that's um, Jordan Van Forest from the Netherlands. Grishuk. Nice. We nice. have Zhigalko. We have um, Martinez from Peru. So a pretty strong bunch at the top. No surprises there. And I, I'm, what do you make of what's happened so far, Maurice, before we take our break? It's been fast and furious. I mean, we're struggling to keep up with all this great action. But I've seen some good games. We've seen some really cool games so far. But I'm surprised by the, the blitz instincts of some of the players. I do feel like they're letting their time tick down too much and they're panicking under pressure. It's something people like Hikaru just would never do. He just, you know, when you play that much bullet, three minutes feels like three years. And yeah. he's, he makes, you can see how he just differentiates, differentiates himself from the top. Like and, this, this yeah. is where I belong. And this is where you guys belong. He always says, Maurice, you better make a good move fast than a great move slowly. If you waste exactly. the time, you don't have the rest to calculate. And, well, you're absolutely right, Maurice. We've had some great action thus far. It will continue. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we will have round seven of this Speeches Championship Super Swiss.
And look who it is. It's uh, Gotham Chess, International Master Levy Rosman, eating, enjoying the break here, and also probably enjoying the fact that he's nearing 100,000 subscribers on YouTube, and I believe nice. nearly the same amount of followers on Twitch. So he's doing really well, exploding on the scene, and enjoying his uh, New York slice of pizza. Yeah, he just got me hungry looking at him <laughs> eating, man. <laughs> That's good. I don't know who the pizza company is that sent him that pizza, but... There, you know, it makes me wonder, what, what's the pizza he's eating, man? Go get me some. I, I need to order. The, I couldn't quite tell if it looked like a dollar slice because, I mean, come on, New York, you get a dollar slice anywhere. Good quality. Shoot, I'm thinking about it too much. Maurice, how am I going to focus the chest again? Can't beat it. Let's not talk about it, man. We got work to do. <laughs> <laughs> we got work to do. <laughs> I mean, get on the, get on the well, phone and order, order some pizza to the crib. There's a, a dollar slice place just literally around the corner from me. So, are you still talking about it, dude? I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get to the chest or something because I'm literally getting hungrier as you speak. And I didn't need to see him eating while this happened. You know, after this next break, I'm going downstairs and I'm getting some food. That, that That's what you started. Yeah. Can, can the next game start, please? That way we can talk about chess and that way I don't have to uh, you know, pollute Maurice's brain with thoughts of anything but that. So, uh, so Maurice, how about them Lakers? Oh my goodness. It's really sad to see two of Miami's stars go down and not be able to play. You need everybody all hands on deck when you're playing against LeBron James and Anthony Davis. Beast. <laughs> oh my goodness. These are some NBA finals to be watching. Those two Laker tradition pride. I think they're just trying to win it for Kobe Bryant anyway. I, I don't think Miami would have been able to stop them, but this is Kobe's year, Kobe's championship. And this is what they're going to dedicate it to. So that looks over i can't imagine you winning four out of five to stop the lakers right now if you're miami nah. i mean I, I do think that jimmy butler is going to take over and win the game for the heat but without Drogic and uh bam as you're saying yeah it just doesn't feel like there's a chance and if those two don't play i don't i don't think you know superman is gonna have to come into the building <laughs> and it superman, turns out they have superman on yeah, their team too yeah exactly. Howard. you beat me to it and they got howard they got rondo and it seems like those players have I went full Benjamin Button. They're getting younger. It seems like this. Season. It's crazy. The Lake. The, just book. Just book it. The Lakers are are going to be champions. The debate will be who's the MVP of that matchup. Will it be Davis or LeBron? But we know who the MVP is here. His name is Ikaru Nakamura, and he's looking to do some damage. As you see here, he's streaming as he plays, uh, just whipping out the moves instantaneously smiling as he does it look at that charisma yeah because he's making uh, a draw easy draw this, oh. this particular draw annoys me so much <laughs> i can't tell you he's <laughs> laughing it up these these gms when they need a draw they just play this line it's, it's so disgusting. frustrating i mean like already we're tired of the berlin but when you play this like anti-berlin sort of not even the answer, but you allow the Berlin and then just make the draw. And the point is that everybody that in this position, the bishop on f8 cannot move because the g7 pawn hangs. And after queen e4 check, the bishop on c8 can't move because the b7 pawn hangs. And if you have bishop e7, you're lying bishop f4 with the tempo, and white just gets too easy of a time developing. So that's why they make a draw. I absolutely hate it. Maurice. I hated the fact that you even explained that sucker just now. <laughs> I, this is so ridiculous to watch. And I see... Hikaru and Wesley, they just do this regularly. Like, I think it's exactly this position, in fact, that they do it. Uh, I'm, Olympic I'm teammates, I don't think they, they like each other that much, but what can you do? Now, this is a real chess position as we look at it right here. It certainly is. There's a knight on e5, knight on c4. Those two are defending each other, but they're also a bit super, superfluous, excuse me, as they're called. They're stepping on each other's toes. They can't both use the e5 square. Uh, but Maurice, what I'm looking at is the long term. I feel like that pawns for black, while there's an extra pawn on the queen side, they're quite vulnerable as well. That last trade was interesting. You get the rook to the a7 square. If it had some life to it, then yes, because that rook was pinning on that line. The, the position, though, Without the rooks being coordinated, Robert, and the trade on it, you made that point about trade the pawns on the queen side. By trading, the pawn on a5 was the button I saw right away that restricted black. By trading on b4, now it's only the c pawn that's the big worry. It's not easy to get at it. Right. There is a great net on d4 for black, but I like white's less of f. What? Excuse you? Oh, oh my gosh, does queen take c4 at the end of this? Oh. 
<laughs> like, oh, Jack Picos. <laughs> that was quick. Ooh, that was wow. nice. But F7 is hanging at the moment and he's Thank taking you. on F7. I still, I feel like nothing's really going on, but whoa. Oh, 92. No, he, he missed it. Oh, he, he missed it. <laughs> he missed it. He missed just a fork of the queen. <laughs> Game would have been over, and now White is back in business. Main threat uh, on G7 must always be protected by the knight on F5, but things like something landing on D6 is being threatened all the time. Even 93, Robert. Even a 93 yep. could be problematic. Let's say you trade on D8 to play 93. What do you do about that? In fact, what do you do? That's what game. is trade and play 93? That's that game looks like F5. solid piece. Oh gosh! And you'd have to play G six, but I'm sacking or something is bad. Something bad is going to happen to you. F six is hanging, right? You need the G seven pawn. Oh, F six is hanging. True no, that. Just, no. That is, so oh. has he seen? He hasn't seen it yet. What's wrong with takes? Oh. He didn't play it. He hey, wait, didn't play it. Queen F seven, Knight F seven, Rook takes E one. Don't I get two? I thought I Yo, two rooks there. What is happening, Black? <laughs> These guys are missing. These moves, move after move. Oh my gosh! And well. They have plenty of time, all things considered. And now it's just a game. This is a new game, both sides of chances. And G4 played F5 to follow. Where's this queen going? From C6 to C8? And actually for E6. C8 looks like the only square. Oh, D5, I guess. D F oh, you're right. D5. D5 looks scrumptious. Why not? Oh, what a game this has been already. And now B3 trying to solidify the position. Black has to unravel, but I don't like White's king position. This, if this queen gets chased out, so now this queen, if it leaves, there is something like a knight c6. Mm -hmm. there, there it is. And you have to reconnect because of the Ooh. pin. And now the knight's back on d4. Will there he be a knight, knight two, two again? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, oh my gosh. This is bananas, folks. Why do they keep missing the moves? And now knight going back to h7. Now they're feeling some time pressure issues, I think. Yeah, and there's might be some rookie five stuff going on because there's knight. G there it is. Yes, because indeed. Nice F5 five. Is, F five is hanging. There's knight. G4. There have been tons of knight forks in this game. Rook takes e five and rook takes f five. Game over. Game finally over. Jeez. Oh Woo. my gosh! We heart attack. Heart attack. Seriously, <laughs> if you were the trainer of one of these guys, you'd be like, seriously. <laughs> now Black's just mopping up, and there goes the victory finally. But you know what? He played all those scintillating tactics at the end, Robert. But 92, and we'd be looking at a different game a long time ago. Right here, 92 check, forking the king and the queen. And we've made plenty of these mistakes ourselves in Blitz, so we know how it feels. But that's why we can laugh at it. We know that we miss these things all the time, and the players, they missed it several times even uh, going forward because when that knight reroutes Robert. back to d4, 92 <laughs> check. Again. You know, you're. I, I love the way you're being all politically correct and polite. <laughs> you never miss that stuff, Robert. Stop it. Stop it. 92? Uh uh, with time yeah. on the clock, yeah. come on, they gotta no find way, it. they gotta no, find you gotta it. find that move. You're a boss player, you gotta find that move. So, let's keep on going here. We do have several other big games going on, so let's check them out. We have that is a Mishonic, that's Alexei Serona. He has the white pieces here, he's in a dead loss. I don't position. care what pieces you have, I don't care what color pieces they, they could be turquoise. You're yeah. dead, like that's it's over. Point. Get that that's, one. What, what was that's over, over. Oh, I had no time. I had no time. I was like, what was that last move? Rook takes a black pawn, but when you're flagging and you're probably losing because the king's coming to help, Indeed. it's over. Wow. What have we seen today? Any other game? Oh, this one's <laughs> Bastido. <laughs> Maurice, you just expect it now. If I click on a game towards the end of the round, it's going to be an extra queen, but actually, well, why click, on, time? click on another game. I mean, this is uh, just let's keep trying, man. This is this is like the casino, Robert. When you're at a casino, you just keep trying, pull again, see what happens next, and okay. uh, you get you might get lucky. Uh, doesn't seem like I'm getting too draw by stalemate. Oh, don't <laughs> 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 Okay, that one we could laugh. <laughs> they both had that, point that eight one seconds could, left. We could definitely laugh at that one. <laughs> oh, Queen C3. <laughs> Ooh, there were so many made in twos in that position, but not that oh, last move. That's sad. Mm -mm -mm. All right, who we got? Um, we have uh, Martinez playing Hikaru here. So both players at six and a half. And we're at the um, beginning of the game, and I can assure you Hikaru is giving up no draws quickly in this game. 
No way. He's uh, you know this is he's not playing Wesley. So as strong as his opponent is, he's not playing Wesley. And Ikaru thinks he could beat anybody, and deservedly sure. so. So in that last game, he had Black against Wesley. Yeah, you know that's one you can duck and dodge if the guy wants to make a draw or K whatever. But when he's playing anybody else, maybe barring Magnus, he's thinking, you know you know what? Let's go for it. And now he's just played this very interesting little maneuver with Knight Might back be. to B8. That's a sign of a confident man, by the way. He says, I might give you a slight edge, but I'm planning to beat you anyway. Yeah, that move Knight to B8, going to D7. So he's just like, I don't want to ruin my pawn structure. Let me just keep the board as complicated as possible. But I like White's position, honestly. Knight F5 is coming, whether you like it or not. Yeah, Knight H4 to F5 looks like uh, the interesting threat there. And he, and oh, he has he C4. It. Watch out. So you have to be careful about that queen potentially getting trapped at some point. So you have right. bishop d6. That's the good news. So now how and do you... I like your knight h4 move. Knight h4. Knight h4. There's no knight e4, right? So why can't he play this move? He's been avoiding it for quite some time. Yeah, because you have knight h4, knight f5, is, and you can bring e9 as well to save the e4 pawn. I'm not sure. He's... There he goes. Okay, finally. It took him about a year and a half to finally play this move. And there is no knight takes e4 idea in this position. Nope. Just take that bishop. And it's now f4 is finally. A, and, he, and he didn't go for that square. He's, he wants the bishop pair instead. So bishop f1, g3. No, he puts a bishop on c4. But now you can't play g3 because h3 is hanging. All right. But how does black make any headway here, Robert? I mean, he just played the very bold a5, needing to do something. The question now becomes you know, you got the two bishops, but what are your next few moves? I mean, he, now he's put his bishop back to f1. You made that point to be able to play a G3, to chase the knight out. But I'm still saying, I always like to know, what if, if I gave you three moves to play and you're not allowed to take any of my pieces, what are you supposed to do? And he just played the queen to, to E6, allowing, yeah. allowing B5, allowing the, the bishop to be liberated. I didn't uh, he, like that didn't move. I think G3. if I'm reading your tone correctly as well, Maurice, you didn't like queen e6 either because it gave white an extra idea. You were asking the question, what's white's idea? And then he gave white a new one immediately. Yeah, exactly. And this light squared bishop has life. I mean, that's a real piece. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a serious piece you're going to have to deal with. And now he's just played a move that hangs the e4 pawn. He'll get, wait, what, what's queen the point? Queen b7? Can I take that one? And then you take C3, C3 is hanging and then E2 check. You got to be careful for. So did you say E2? I think it just because I think I, 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 I don't think people see the E2 square these days. <laughs> well, the, from the last game for sure, but Knight C3 yeah. looks playable and Hikaru has played it and he did guard the E2 point. He does have the light square bishop. So at the moment down upon, but that bishop is such a strong piece. And Hikaru has just played E4. So Bishop a6, doesn't that win your bishop on c7? Bishop a6, what about rook to a8? In oh, gosh. Now, take on c7, both c3 and f4 hanging, but you might have the 92 check that you're talking no, about. No, no, I know. The bigger point, rook d8 would happen. So bishop a6, rook a8, queen takes. Oh, yeah. It's a rook d8 problem. You're right. So now he's played bishop back, harassing the knight. I really like this for white. Those bishops look like killer bees, lasering into black's position. And so, I mean, what's, what's black supposed to do here? If Where's knight the knight? bishop b5, right? So you take a pawn, you lose a piece. That's right. This looks uh -oh. great. Hikaru in trouble. Knight b1? <laughs> Nobody believes that move. No way in the world. Something's wrong. I feel like uh -oh. a bishop f7 is waiting to be played as well at some point, but he's played rook d1, and the knight cannot get out. Every one of white's pieces is organized. Rook b8 would be the only move to try to keep the game going, to, to exploit something in the position. He's played knight to d3 and, and just said uh chomp chomp breakfast time yeah i think it's the best that hikar could do because he is attacking this knight on e3 the a4 pawn could fall and this pawn on d3 is something uh and he's B8? allowed Wait, he's, B8. He's, he's allowed B8. What d2 and oh my gosh he has rook b8 yep yep indeed Oh and now God. we're in and now it's hard to believe hikaru missed that by the way now the d2 pawn just drops and this is easy. This is over. This is, there are no hustle chances in this position. Hikaru is just lost. It's only about the time now that he would beg, pray would save him somehow. That last move, G3, does open up with some light square possibilities with a rook C1 mm -hmm. uh, in effect. But at the moment, oh. nada. 
Nothing, baby. Yeah, I want to play knight g4. He does so. F6. Take in on f6 and rook a7 check. There must be a, a force mate. Yeah. Of like course it. there's a force mate. There's no way you survive this position. Uh, that's going to be all she wrote. Oh, and he's actually... Check. What? What? Uh-huh. I thought you just go for the checks, but he instead brings rook to e1. Okay, he's, he's taking a little extra time. He's He's got to worry about the clock a little bit, but... Hikari's going to survive this. Watch. Just watch. This is unbelievable. Oh, no. Queen c8, rook e8. Oh, missed it. He missed it. <laughs> oh, free rook! Free oh rook! Oh my gosh, unbelievable. <laughs> I told unbelievable, you. <laughs> people. This is ridiculous. The way Hikaru, I mean, and look at Hikaru. You saw that rook went to b7, b2 in an instant? Is it, He's like a cat, man. Jeez. Look, he's so happy. He's feeling that save. I cannot believe Hikaru survived that game. Oh my gosh, and he's got his TSM jersey on, and what a finish to that game because I mean, Jocelyn was winning. He had it in the bag, but Hikaru is a tenacious, a tough defender, Maurice. It's hard to take yes, him down. You know, you, you say tenacious at the same time, you pointed out a me, okay? You're like, this is over. This is done. I don't have to do anything. I see the win, and the game is over. And the points you made earlier in the position where you played knight of six and rook eight, like, what is wrong? With the sequence you pointed out, I don't see it. Takes, takes. And isn't this just mate? Yes. Like I mean, it's going to be mate. You you have yeah, to play bishop g7. We're taking it. You're taking We're taking back. You have to go to h7 to last one more move. And now you don't last one more move. King h6 drops the queen h4. It's mate. The game would have been over if he had just played rook a7. So it's not just tenacity in defense. I'm going to argue and say, these guys panic. Their, their bullet skills are not on the level. When it gets down to 10 seconds and it's time to knock people out, they're not finding the knockout blows. No, he went for queen e7 check, which is also objectively good. But as you said, not a knockout. And when you only have 25 seconds left, it's hard to complete the game. And so we're up next. Hikaru, well, next challenger is Artemiev. Doesn't really you know, get easier for him the rest of the way. That's what happens when you win all your games. Yeah, well, this is beautiful. Beautiful to watch these kind of games, high level chess. Let's see how this goes. You know, we got an E6 Sicilian and then backing out with C3 Sicilian now on the board. Okay. This is your territory, approach. Robert? It is, it is. I grew up playing this uh, my entire childhood and it's very tame from White's perspective. So some people believe it's not the best or the uh, kind of optimal line playing for an initiative, but I do like it. You have the pawns in C3 and D4. Here comes Knight G5, the common idea, stopping Black and Castle. And preparing queen h5, which will threaten knight takes on e6 and create some action there. Queen h5, I believe queen h5, g6, or any move, queen h3, any move that attacks the queen, you play queen h3. Instead, he's going for this maneuver, Robert. Bishop, uh, knight to e4, attacking the bishop on d6 and an offer of a trade of these bishops. Yeah, I'm starting to like Black's position because I, in the end games, I have a problem with this c pawn. It's very easy to put pressure on it. And I do like what Akar is doing. I think he's making the best of the situation and watch out for the D6 square in particular. But white wants to trade queens with rook H to B1, A4, A5. Well, what does it really amount to? That's the question. Yeah, I was about to say, I had white with some potential attacking chances. And now I'm just looking at this position and thinking end game and draw. And that's what's happened. Oh, <laughs> oh painful. Let's, let's not even say anything about this game. Let's move on. It looks okay. like both sides were happy to take the draw. How about we go to our boy there. Sasha? Sharp position. Sasha with the white pieces taking on Badur Jabawa with black. So two excellent players. Jabawa, one of the most entertaining players. But as we saw in that uh, Grand Chess Tour event, didn't he score like one out of 27 or something really abysmal that one time? That was in Leuven. Uh, I was there and there were some issues. I'm, I'm not going to get too deep into it, but... Uh, yeah, he was having fun. That's what he was doing. He was having a little too much fun, not on the chessboard. Got it. And, and uh, it just did not work out for him. You can't go play those animals and have a, a good time off the board. These guys are relentless. Yeah. And that's what happened. And now Black looks like he's under some pressure despite having the two bishops. White's pieces just look... This looks like you, Robert. I'm actually, this is how I feel when I see this. It looks like the kind of thing you do to people. You look at all those sweet squares Black uh, White has, and he's gravitating all his pieces to dark square. Another rook will hit E1, queen might hit G3, and that light square bishop, you, you have the two bishops, but your bishop will be all dressed up with nowhere to go. 
Uh, firstly, thanks for the compliment. I wish I could play as well as Sasha, but right now this position is just so easy to play for white and every move is a struggle for black. Like I can't play bishop f8, you take on f6. Can I move my knight away? Not really. Look at bishop d8. What does that really accomplish for me? I can just swing my rook to e1. I can play queen g3, as you mentioned, Maurice, or knight to d5. If he decides knight to go d5, in. Uh, I saw the bar get a little strange there. I don't understand why you need to trade in this position. Like, isn't there... I thought there was a bishop e6 on the last move. Bishop c7, nevertheless, more trades coming down the pike. And now you could have a massive trade fest on e5. And I am totally not feeling what happened for white right now. But you made a point about this bishop on d7. Pretty bad. Oh, gosh. It got you know pretty bad very quickly. Knight f5. That, that got much worse than I thought it would have, <laughs> no, actually. Queen e5 just made on g7. Bye-bye. I don't like, I, I mean, I, I, okay. I'm not going <laughs> to say anything. Uh, I just don't understand the the way uh, the players played. Black played this game and just allowed himself to go down this quickly. Yeah, this, this actually just came over. Uh, you can't even stop me from mating. You play f6, they just take on g7. Oof. Queen g... Oh, queen c5. Queen c5 and you're done. Yeah. Ouch. Well, that silenced us pretty quickly. That was... Yeah, I, I, that was an interesting position. You know, White was showing some stuff, but B Black just collapsed, and there there that went. It does feel like three minutes is not something they handle very well. You know the move I thought was playable was Bishop to E6. Is that a blunder, Robert? No, I think it's, it's a reasonable move, because if Knight E6, you can just take back with the Rook. Don't hang your Rook in the corner, and the that worst was, seems to be behind Black. That's... That, that, I see, I don't get it. I mean, I just felt like, boom, just drop that move and keep You're it right. going. And he he just fell apart instead. That's why I didn't like this for White, because the way that happened, and instead he let he let this happen really fast. Even, even there, you could have not let this happen. Wow, okay. <laughs> let's get to another game. Yeah, let's go to another one. That got bad really quickly. Let's go to, um, oh, they drew. That's as soon a, as I get there, you wouldn't draw a very game. symmetrical position. We have Wesley So with an extra queen for just two pieces against Sergei Zhigalko from Belarus. And this should be easy. He's also up so much time here. I really like when people with less material win games or at least fight back. But this position, pieces are just so active that that is the, the, the major pieces that you just don't have a chance. You just, there's no way. Everything about White's position was too good. And this one looks like a technical draw. Should be, but I'm okay, worried about White's last time. Move? Look at that time, though. 16 seconds left for Andraken with the White pieces. MBL, he has 40 seconds. So even if this should be a draw, can you just flag the guy? That's terrible. <laughs> King C3, King B3, too easy. Yeah, that's that would be awful. By the way, that's something I hate doing. Uh, I understand that you, know, you want to win the game, but to just flag someone like that is just from from the way i grew up that's yep. like park etiquette even even the hustlers in the park no that's like it's etiquette don't just like it maurice i don't know if you remember this but we played a blitz game on icc like many years ago and you had like no time but it was rook versus rook and i offered you a draw so i i remember that it was a super long time ago you like messaged like hey thanks man i was like yeah no worries. that's good I'm, that's I'm, good I'm, etiquette yeah man. i'm not that's, gonna you know. i wasn't gonna flag you there but also, when people do flag each other, rook versus rook, we do get great content, right? I'm sure you've seen some outbursts by certain players. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, the, it, it does make, uh, make an enjoyable experience for some, but not for all. It's a, it's a bit laughable when that happens. But no, I think it's sad. I think it's sad. You should. What is this? White just completely blew what was a potentially winning position. No and time. now it's just blitzing with no time on the clock. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, it's still me. That's the best thing he could do. <laughs> it was hilarious. Oh, I'm my like, God. He's freaking out. He blunders a rook, but he actually did the smartest thing possible. He forced the draw. <laughs> I don't, I think he pre moved it and it just happened. <laughs> I think he pre moved because he was repeating those moves, right? If you go back, that's yeah. all he was doing. He was just doing that. And so Black said, let me, let me trick him. <laughs> And put the rook there. And by the way, uh, oh, he could have he could have taken the rook himself because he's <laughs> yeah. pre moving on every move. So he has rook b seven, and then he just by four moves away from mating. And <gasps> what was that? <laughs> oh man, this is this oh. after after doing this with you, Robert. 
I understand why this generation needs increment. <laughs> like, because yeah. back in oh. the day, we, you can, you know, you give me some time. I don't care what time it is. You just don't panic. You just find the right pre moves. You see that Hikaru does that all the time. He makes yeah. 10 seconds again look like 10 hours he or does. at least 10 minutes. He just knows how to just next, next, do that, do that, do that. But you see panic when these folks who are not used to playing with no extra time on the clock, you see real panic happen and they just start making crazy moves. And honestly, people take, try to get advantage of it because that's what Abdul Sitar with the black pieces. He put his rook on pre on purpose. He's like, oh, he's not going to think about me putting my rook in the seventh rank. So let me right. do it and try to win his rook. He does win the rook, but it's the best possible situation for Moskalenko with the white pieces because it forced the draw. He does not lose on time. And well, speaking of time, Maurice, I'm having a great time with you here, but it's uh, time for another fair play break. Sounds good. Let's make it happen. See you soon.
we return almost ready for the next round of action in this speed chess championship super swiss marisa did you grab any food during the break because i had a banana man i did and you will not believe this I, i'm not making this up so you were talking about pizza right so i go downstairs real quick to go see what's in my my fridge i got a plum i had that real fast right real uh -huh. quick then i'm grabbing so i'm grabbing stuff and, and then there's a pear right okay and then and then I'm like, okay, what's the deal? I got peanuts. And I'm like, what are all these things We're beginning with P? Like, they, where's the pizza? And so I said, I grabbed this, this Activa. I was like, it's Activa, yeah. but it's a probiotic. And you know what the friggin' brand is? It's peach. <laughs> <laughs> like, what, what the hell? Oh, Can poor you imagine Maurice. The, the one thing is not there is pizza. I got all these peas. And the one thing is not there is the pizza. Dang, you honestly seem pretty sad about it. Like you're a very, a very upbeat guy. You're always happy. Every time we've hung out, you're always in a good mood. You bring the energy, but you do seem a bit sad right now. i be honest with you. I just did not like the way he was enjoying that pizza so much. I mean, like, <laughs> like, if I wasn't hungry, it wouldn't have been a problem. But he's just like, oh. <laughs> that was eating that, crunching that thing, man. Jeez. Well, good advertising for, for some New York pizza. But right now, let's rock and roll. Next game has begun. We see an anti-Berlin for Hikaru and Grishuk. The start of the game, maybe not the most exciting for everybody, but I think we're going to get a good one. That's my feeling here. It's okay. I mean, once you have this imbalance, the two bishops, oh, man, as soon as I said it, yeah, well, sorry, I, I mean, it, as soon as I said it. Tell me more about those two bishops because... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay, well, at least there's an A file, although after A6, there's nothing on the A file. What does White have to write home about except zero? Um, four, five extra seconds now. Okay, the knight will land on f5. And that's the goal. Uh, well, g6 will happen and stop that like likely. So he's decided to go a different route with his knight on c4. a6 has indeed occurred. This is the way you can get the two bishops by playing on knight takes b6. I mean, the one bishop, the superior minor piece, supposedly. But it's the one you're like, oh, really want to do that though like, yeah this, i like the, my knight the 96 is too strong right because it stops at four makes d4 hard and that knight can even come to d4 itself exactly so, i like black's position in these variations honestly i can't say i like anything that special oh. about whoa 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 oh okay okay now now we're playing some chess castle queen side uh i would i take wanna, with the queen you want to take with the queen i wanted to take with, with the pawn i thought it was a bit more logical to keep the knight out as you described that knight landing on the d4 square and now white seems to have a little something robert yeah he's uh pushing his pawn the problem though he can't he's a protect d3 so he can go c4 and b5 he's trying to really break through there oh is he he's trying to sack on b7 uh -oh. welcome to the sack party what are you supposed to do about this you have to play c5 and then white plays b5 and says please take that pawn just do it just, just do me a favor steal that one because you've opened up the a file and there will be a checkmate it's over we've talked about the a line castling queen side was like the biggest blunder of all i mean now knight now he just needs to, to deal with this capture on g2 but knight c6 is coming with queen a6 on the next move. And so now he's running for his life, folks. He's he's praying he gets away, but now the knight back to c4, a6 is gonna drop. And this is bad news, <laughs> boys and girls. This honestly looked too, oh, you can't put your queen on d7, can you? Is he trying to run the king to a8? Like if a7, I, I, king b7, king a8? I, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I mean, Wait, it a might not be that bad. You, you I mean, think? No way. I, at first, I thought it was terrible. Right? I'm just like, come on, right? But this rook on f1 is sort of stuck to the king side, so you can't bring even more material into the attack as eventually black will operate on the I mean, what are you talking? Now it's over. Now now it's got to well, be Johnny. I thought Ball. he had to go king b8 and bring his king over there. I wasn't suggesting his king stay on d7. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this this is absolutely... I like a rook a6 action. You're going to sack on b6. I know, well. I know you too well. I know you too well, Maurice. You're sacking on b6 next move. That's how it works. That's how it works. You put something in the way, you got you to gotta sack. And the knight on e6 is frozen. The king on e7 is terrible. The pawn on eight, I mean, that's not even that's yeah. not even asked Time. twice to sack on b6 right now. Oh, yeah. maybe he's thinking knight b6. No, he. I, I thought there was a potential rook b8 idea, but uh, no. Nah. What, what's wrong with taking on b6 now, Robert? 
nothing. Queen d7, rook b7, probably. Just pin that queen. And the knight c7, queen b6. And rook c8, this is going to happen. Queen b6, rook c8, eight equals queen. Or eight, eight, eight equals knight. Eight equals rook. Eight equals bishop. Just promote to something over here after rook c8. So, uh... <laughs> you were having fun with that one, for real. I am. Give me a knight. I like the knight. You're putting more pressure on the pin piece, right? That's Evil. Rude. Rude. <laughs> Cruel. <laughs> I like it. I it like might it. be. Look. It might be the best move. Just to throw that out there. <laughs> Man, that was he castled queen side. He yeah, castled was... queen side. No, that went awful quickly. Yeah, not that recommended. Mm. Well, let's keep on going here. We do have other games. Hikaru just well, he's in great shape, great form right now. Let's go to um, Arjun Aragaisi with the white piece against Wesley. So, what's that king doing on f three? Yeah, this is not where you and he just left his bishop hanging. Okay. You gotta be asking for it. Like seriously? I don't understand these moves. What um, did he just do? Did, was there no defense? I mean, with this king on f3, I guess there really wasn't because he just brought his pawn to g5, taking away f4. He brought in his queen, and it's just pretty straightforward, honestly. Dang, that hurt. Wow. I thought there might have been a queen d2 defense, but queen h1 is problematic. Yeah, queen h1, the king has to go up to g4, and then you have f5. No matter which way the king goes, is a check on the diagonal with mate, either an f3 or an f1. So Yeah, that's it. Yikes. All she wrote. Ouch. Nice finish. We have the beast from Lyon, that is Maxime rochelle Graf, taking on Artemiev, so another great matchup, but they're already have liquidated too much. Let's move on. I don't even want to look at this anymore. Let's go to this one. We have... Uh, Andre Esipenko with the white pieces against Dimitri Andreykin with black. And whoa, there's pawn C3 is, and here's a second one, D4, anybody? Absolutely. And the pawns are in black's favor down in exchange, but you've got connected passers. You just need to settle down any counterplay that white has, get the knight into the right square. I, I'm i trying to figure out what, oh, oh wait, uh, just allowed wait. this. And there's no D3 this, there's no D3. this wait. look like it's, it's very close. Black just needs a knight c5 check. And oh, I guess he doesn't. He just needs to now push his pawn forward. <laughs> and it looks like this. Whoa, 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 whoa. Couldn't he have taken on d2 there, Robert? Knight b2. We just let him queen. Wait, what? Oh, my gosh. What just happened there? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. This, this is awful. And it's all about clock again. Queen of, isn't queen of three mating? Why did you have to bring your king over? No, he, he didn't. He just did. It. <laughs> How did I mean, it just like, happen? Like right here, even... right here. Back up one. Back up one move. Yeah. So D two. Yes. And I'm thinking, can't I take this pawn? You can, and then try Maybe to you're... bring the king out that way, like back. I guess I'll either bring is... the king the other way or, or yeah, I think king D four. I mean, your knight. But does, does your knight take my pawn? Is that, that was what I was wondering. Yeah, I'm just going to sacrifice my knight for your pawn at any point and just try to win your... Oh, next game started so quickly. Uh, all right, let's go. Hey, is Yana Pomish against Hikaru Nakamura? This is just the gauntlet for Hikaru, and he keeps winning all his games. If Hikaru wins this, is he, like, mathematically impossible to catch unless he, like, loses all his games or something? Yeah, there's 15 rounds, so there's still technically a chance for everybody else, but realistically... Well, actually, who is it? Wesley is 8.5 out of 10. And so is um, Jordan Van Forest. So we're going to have to give Jordan a little bit more of a viewing. So let me pull up more Jordan. Love. Yeah, let's do that. Let's make, so. let's make that a point. All right, got that up right now. Because Jordan's having the blitz tournament of his life right now. So Incredible. Forward. What's this knight doing on h6? That's, that does not look incredible, this knight here. But this last move, I'm not sure if his plan is to play bishop takes h6. I know a lot of French players let this happen and not worry about it, especially if you can get your pawn... I mean, I might even like the fact that the pawn's on d7 because you can challenge the e5 pawn. So to me, this move, I'm not that worried if I'm black, if you want to take. So I play, I just play d6 and what's the big deal? I got my bishop, you don't. I don't like that queen b6 move, to be honest, but. Yeah, it allows knight c4 with tempo and now d6 is not possible. You made a great point, Maurice, that typically when you have this in the French, the pawn's already on d5. So the mm -hmm. pawn e5 is really strong, but here you can potentially challenge it with d6. Like plays d5 himself. Well, he felt the need to uh, guard against the knight c4 idea. Now, 
this is this is very close. White needs to. Oh, white is a queen e5 move. Uh -oh. If you move your queen back, queen e5 hits the rook in knight c7. So he does have to deal with that. But maybe the queen can be chased. Is b4 a move here? B4 looks pretty interesting. Maybe the queen has to go. Oh, oh but wait, he can castle still. He can still <laughs> castle. So queen e5 actually runs into castle's king side. So that's, that's something we have, to, we have to watch out for. It's funny, Maurice, you see these pawns here, like, no, no, Black doesn't want the king over there. But no, if you're going to get forked and lose a rook, then casting makes a lot of sense. So uh, maybe casting right now, because I don't think you want to take on c3 and allow knight d6 with check. But maybe uh, Jordan you is don't braver you? than I am. Uh, I don't want to take on c3. It looks too risky. Uh, of course, we don't want to take on c3. But if you give him the capture, you want to castle now. If he gets his pawn, he's down a pawn, right? He gets his pawn back. This, this looks bad. This, this, I, I'm, I'm sorry. You had to go for it like a Victor Korchnoi. Say, okay, show me what you got because this position now. Take on B7. Thank you very much. Drop my bishop back. And why, why didn't I? Might not just up a pawn with a very solid position. No, you are actually the B7 pawn falling is important. Oh, Queen of three, same idea. The bishop's under attack. B7 is still hanging, and he takes it. You're right. And now the bishop on D7 is hanging, and he just got to hope against hope that there's. And then another pawn dropped. Mm. Another one bites the dust, Maurice. Now, would is... you now do you want to take on C3, Robert? And let yes, 96 I do. <laughs> I do. I, I regret it all. I, I need to go back in time and get some counterplay because you're down. Well, it's only two pawns, but it feels like three because all of these wait, what? you're just down a queen now. Like it got worse and worse. Oh my goodness, that was terrible. I think Maurice Jordan says, Can you guys stop looking at my games? Because I was doing well before you started talking about me. We put the light, shine the light on him, and it was too much. Look at this position. Whoa, what a material imbalance. Wait, what is, what? Two rooks and a piece for a queen. There's for no longer this? material imbalance. It's just pain for black, it looks like. Can and these, not, oh, and the, the fact that the, the C pawn is dropping is a disaster. I'm not even worried about a pawn? the A pawn. Who cares? Yeah, and now the rooks are connected. Both knights are great for white over here. Just I just needs next. to play doubles on the, the eighth and just make sure there's no mate on the back rank, which there isn't. Okay. He decided to really make sure he could have, he could have gone down, but that would have been a queenie one check, but it doesn't matter because this is still terrible. There's going to be a knight at five at some point. He's still, his king needs to be on H2, Robert. That's, right. that is my own, my caveat. Put the king on H2. Oh, I like that last move. Oh, Prevent it's a 96. To prevent the knight from going. And now, Bam! Oh, watch out for this A-pawn, though. Suddenly, Hikaru drumming up a little bit of counterplay here. Oh, Knight C3 uh, stops it. That's ball. that. Never mind. <laughs> I take it back. Just kidding. Check. Move the rook. Oh, no, oh he had to give up his knight? But there's going to be But there's a mate, mating attack that's just ferocious. Unstoppable. Look at this. Knight H6 and mate. So take What's his this? knight. Free knight, and then he's going to resign. Yeah. Wow. Beat down. Hikaru Ooh. goes down. And you ask, can anybody catch up to Hikaru? Jan says, hey, Maurice, remember me? You've, we've hung out a bunch in the Grand Chess Tour. Nepo. Whew. If anybody could do it, you would say Nepo could do it, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And that was how, well done. How we keep on going down the list of uh, top games that are remaining, we have Artemiev playing as Grigory Oparin, the strong Russian player who goes to Mizzou, part of the team led by uh, Christian Chirilla. And what's going on here? Pass B pawn, but White's up a pawn. It's got to be good for white. Yes, I would say so. Uh, that last move threatens mm, knight d6 is not quite a threat because of king oh. to e7, but now knight d6 is a threat. And uh, unstoppable. You got to give us the b pawn. It's unstoppable. Yeah, give me that b pawn. Thank you very much. And also, white is up 10 seconds. So Artemia is just a monster. That yeah, he plays such beautiful attacking games as well. Don't give up your pawn in this position. Oh, he dropped the G pawn. Oh, no, no, he didn't drop. He has given away this pawn, but this should be winning, right? Technically, yeah. this is just, this should, but now it's a clock time, a clock situation. Does he have enough time? He has to be careful. Not, this is not a worry. Oh, just can't hang the King. E5 pawn, King D4, Knight D6 check. And you just can, you can win on time if nothing else. Knight so check, uh... take the bishop, and that's going to be money. <laughs> Thank you for the free piece. Game over. Let's go to this one between a game drawn by repetition, but isn't black up a piece? 
Whoa. Which is, huh? Not well, confused. that G pawn is fast, isn't it? Oh, Although yeah. I got to wonder, rook c3, check, and then is it black's move? Yeah, it's black's move. So why can't you check and put your rook on c8 in this position? What's you, wrong with you that? You can. Check, king, b6. And actually, that's what was happening. And I guess rook c8, is there a sacrifice on d5? That's probably what he was scared of. Got a king ah, this line. Oh, because you, your pawns are actually not that strong. Right. I'd still be playing it. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, you got to go for it, right? You got to try. And at a certain point, draws won't be enough. But the top 16 players qualify for tomorrow's uh, knockout. So you need to make sure you're in the top 16. And there are moments where you just have to take a risk. Oh, queen versus rook. Black one on time. Side with the queen one. That's only fair, right? Yeah, sure. Technically a win. Very difficult to win if you know the defensive technique, this this end game, Robert, uh, which I have to say, I would not want to defend that position because I don't know squat, Bob, defend. I know it's like a third rank defense thing, whatever. Don't hang your rook. Yeah, but who wants to suffer a guy has the queen against your rook? Nobody does. Not even the slightest. So Wesley Stone, clear first. Nine out of 11. We have Hikaru, Artemi, have Grishuk, um, Nepo, and Martinez at nine out of 11, and then a whole bunch at eight and a half. So Pretty. That was a big result, Nepo beating Hikaru. Huge result. And now we get one more round before we get the final break of the day. And can Wesley keep up this pace? Fantastic pace so far. And Maurice, look at the development for Black. So I love the Bishop on B2. That's a beast. But mm -hmm. you're down several moves in development. Your 9 and F5 can be kicked once you play D5. So yep. what is this line? And Nepo is probably being a trickster. Yeah, you got to like this one. Black, come on. It's got to be a good move. D5 gets played, and yeah, that's the end of that. <laughs> Every, everything is flowing. Black's up, like, four moves. It, it almost feels like white just went, like, knight B1, knight C3 for a little bit. Exactly. But sometimes it's funny when that happens, and you still can't figure out how to prove the advantage. Right. Bishop F8, interesting. Wouldn't have been on my mind right away, but I get the idea of the sacrifice of G7 was a threat now what does white do other than just bring the bishop out and castle i mean black can just play knight to d3 check if you want the bishop pair you can also play a5 a4 which is thematic against the field kind of pawn structure uh you can play c5 if you want to push that pawn instead i don't like white's position at all like not in the slightest this is the most concrete point is to just check and then put your queen down the two bishops definitely advantage i would not trade queen Wow, he just traded queens like it was nothing in that position. I'm so upset. They agreed on a draw. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Uh, let's not talk about it. Are you... Let's not. Let's let's not. That's... Why? It's an online blitz game. It is Look, a three minute game. But you know what? They are trying to secure their position in the top sixteen, Robert. Let's let's be what it's about. They're trying to secure the position. No reason to lose. Uh, get your get a lock on the, the situation. Get your draws. Get to like round fourteen, and then you can play with house money. I think that's what's going on. They just figure the guy's too strong. Just chill and cruise into the finish line. That's what's happening. That's exactly what's happening. They're now playing practically and no longer about the chess position. Well, I'm pulling up a player who likes to fight. That's Jeffrey Zhang. He is a Almost 20 years old from the United States, over 2,700 feet in classical, performing very well in the Junior Speeches Championship. Here he is, the white pieces, Maurice, in this end game where it's even material, but black has the worst pawns. Both of them are isolated and more vulnerable than white's pawns are. Yeah, these, this kind of position requires very precise play by black in order to make sure everything's okay in the long run. He's trying to get his king to the D6 square as fast as possible, Bishop A4 played. And now this move, Bishop F5, just giving away the pawn on a5 did not take it. It's actually it's not going anywhere. So yeah. he just brought his king over. I love he moves like that, Maurice, where instead of just taking it, you make a move to avoid a check and say, hey, please do play d3 because then I'll win your d pawn, which scares me a little bit more. Also, bishop c2 is an issue. Bishop c2 is a better square for the bishop, Robert. And then and then you can bring your rook to e to e4 and then play rook to e2. But like this, that bishop is just potentially a victim on the square. F5, I might even sack for it at, at any, like, don't, don't think I won't take that thing. But instead, he's just gone straight for this pawn on D3. And again, 
there's a rook f5 coming at any point. A matter of fact, I'm I'm counting the, the moves before it actually happens. Although he has rook d5 as a threat. Rook d5, and nice. there it is. A4. And a4, of course. And now the d3 pawns has dropped in a direct way. Wow, that was really excellent technique by uh, Jeffrey there. He's now up two pawns. We started, it was even material. Now both of Black's pawns have gone. And this is just an easy conversion at this point. He is ahead on the clock as well. So let's move on to a different game. Kudos to Jeffrey on this one. Yeah, let's resignable. go uh, to Artemiev versus Martinez because this one looks electric. This is sharp. Uh, I can't evaluate instantly. You see the Kings are castle, both Kings castles queen side. I couldn't judge. What's the opening, Robert? Could you, could you tell me with guarantee, don't look at the moves, what the opening is? <laughs> No, guys. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? <laughs> this was juicy. We were just going to get into this one. I was going to say it was so chaotic. You couldn't tell what the opening is. The pawn structure is not giving you a single clue, but it's clear. They are now playing for tomorrow. Oh They're playing my for tomorrow. Gosh. That's what's you know, going on. No need to be surprised. That's what's happening. They're playing for tomorrow. <laughs> you and I hate it. We hate oh it. With my. Every part of our New York fighting spirit. But we might do the same thing if we were in their shoes given like three rounds after this to go and you get guaranteed into the finals because that's what's going on. I understand why they're doing it. I blame the fact that you can offer the draw rather than the people offering it. No, actually, I just blame them right now. I'm going to be honest with you. And <laughs> oh, I don't even know what opening it was. I, I can tell you what happened to end the game, much to my chagrin. But hey, this end game, I feel like Black could somehow win this if White's not careful. King d4? I don't understand. It wasn't rook d6. Okay, oh, yeah, he's, he's gonna check from, from uh, behind and win the pawn back. Oh, King, King B5. I think he's hmm. uh, uh yeah. what I, I told you, Black's gonna win this game. He's, he's trying to lose the game, yeah. He, he did, he's literally trying to lose the game now. So, this is why you offer a draw and losing this game, you, you're gonna feel terrible about yourself, right? Because you wish you had a draw instead of this lost position staring in front of you. This is what the players are afraid of. They don't know what might happen in the actual game. C2, of course. And uh, that's all she wrote. I don't know why King E2 didn't win on the spot right there, but there oh it is. Oh, gosh. Now we're going to have to. Wait, there could be a stalemate. We did see Queen and Rook versus a King in a stalemate earlier today. So let's see if that happens. It looks like Prognanon is way too fast with the black pieces. Okay, yeah. bring the King up. Queen G7. Okay. Why did he play Queen G7? Why is the king, why is the king moving around? What's he the got deal? it. He got it. I know, but what? <laughs> Robert, go back a couple of moves. We saw this already happen. Okay. <laughs> okay. Just go back to the moment he should have played Queen G7. No. All right, so the, the rooks oh. get traded and we get there. And then... <laughs> Robert. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Bring the king. Go. Yeah. Now here. Yep. That's main three. It's yeah. the same thing as we saw before. Queen G7, king F4, mate. Done. Yep, I'm with you. I don't. Totally I mean, that's you know. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Maurice, Maurice, Maurice. We've seen some inexplicable things. We've seen some just absolutely hilarious things. We I have. don't know what to say anymore. I'm out of words. There are well, no words. This is the qualifiers, so we'll see more. We'll see the elite players hanging tomorrow. We'll see knockouts as it happens. This is the qualifier, so you know anything could happen. It's, just a little bit nuts, a little bit crazy, and, but it will be more excitement and even a longer day tomorrow. So that I'm looking forward to. Those matches, they should absolutely bring the pain. Bring, they, bring the real play, I think, the, they, the higher will, level of play. For sure, Maurice. And there are three more rounds left today. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. And when we return, we will have those final three rounds to determine which 16 players will move on to tomorrow's knockout. It, will it be Hikaru in the bunch? Will potentially one of these top guys lose? Remains to be seen. We'll be back in a few.
we are back for the home stretch. Maurice, we've seen the top dogs, Hikaru, Wesley, Nepo, all those guys you expect to be at the top. Who do you think is going to sneak in there down the stretch? Well, I got my boy Jeffrey Zhang as uh, someone who has got to show the heart, the courage, the tenacity, the determination to get it done. Uh, he's got to do it because he's the young buck. He wants to prove that he belongs. You don't want a whole bunch of gangsters running away and saying, no, nah, you're not ready yet. Come on, you're 19. Back. <laughs> so let's look at Jeffrey and see whether or not he can pull it off as he did this last game where he played like a boss. I'm with you. Jeffrey's a good one. I have Gawain Jones. He may not be a teenager and I believe he is a new dad, but Gawain is one of those players who takes swings every single game. He loves I these love risky openings that sometimes can backfire, but most of the times have just like exciting moves and he's got that tactical flair. Some of his best games are just gorgeous, just mm -hmm. beautiful. And like you said, he's aggressive. Uh, he takes big swings. He plays crazy openings. So can't hurt to watch some of his games as well. So maybe we, we just stop in on those two uh, as they try to make it into the final group. Yeah, because on screen, we see players with 9 out of 12 or above. The players we're talking about, Gawain, Jeffrey, they have eight and a half points. So still very much in the uh, mix here, but they need to win their games. They can't make these, let's just say, um, sudden draws that uh, you know how much I love. Those GM draws. You know, when people say G it's, it's a GM draw, as a GM, you go, <laughs> 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 because it's like an expletive you know <laughs> like gm becomes that expletive in that in that situation he's like you took a mm, draw <laughs> it's uh it's really not fun to watch those kind of situations especially when the game starts to get juicy yep what can you do uh they're right, trying they're, to get into the final 16 but there are games maurice where we see the opening we're like okay it's very obvious the game between hikaru and wesley a good example of that they're just mm -hmm. going to make a known theoretical draw but when it's this like in the middle of a complex battle and all of a sudden it's like, well, we agreed to make a draw. And then you're like, wait, what? I was just getting excited about your stuff here. And uh, of course, in the world championship in 2018, we saw that in the final game. Uh, we're used to it by now. Uh, Robert, you're so young. You, uh, dude, I've been <laughs> seeing that for since before you were born. So it's, it's just part of chess. If a draw is available, the players will use it if it allows them to get what they want. So, Let's get into this game. We expect to be sharp. Oh, yes, we do. We have Gawain Jones with the black pieces and Raunak Sadwani, the young Indian talent with the white pieces. So I'm expecting... Both... Sorry, go ahead, Maurice. Yeah, sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt, but they, they both need to get points. So we should let the fans know that. They, they need to get points if they're going to qualify in the top 16. Although this one, Robert... Hmm. Did, we, did we choose the wrong game? Is this one not <laughs> what we were looking for? <laughs> Although Bishop C4, that keeps it a little spicy. He Again, that's good. That's good that you're trying to stay busy. I, I don't want to see them lose the game, but keeping it sharp. Yeah, I would play Knight F5 for Black right now. I mean, I'm going for the Bishop on E3. The B2, he plays it. B2's hanging. E6 could be a threat if you move the Bishop to the wrong square and your Queen is not protected. So Bishop C5 doesn't do it here. Bishop c5, I was thinking e6, but you may have knight e7 check, a crazy tactical sequence. Exactly. And instead, he's played bishop g5. And now it's there's no threat anywhere. So it's just fine as far as white's concerned. Although taking on b2 uh, does allow a knight e7 potential. Uh, I know it's dangerous, but black, black doesn't want white to settle this position down. Black doesn't want white, for example, to play the move c3 and right. then bishop to b3, something that just settles everything about the position and there is a knight takes e7 and th there goes the first move oh queen uh oh tactics queen everywhere now or and now even better than what i was suggesting those solid moves what he just completely ignores the square i don't think it matters to white that much because he does have something like a queen b3 at minimum mm -hmm. to keep just just if you want to chill because knight d4 doesn't work so white has options right now. This is what you want if you have a position like this. Right. Queen takes b7, gives it the bishop on c4, but he plays queen to a4. And now what does black do? You push the pawn to a5, you attack the queen. Are there some sacrifices on c4 to drag the queen into a pin? I'm not quite sure it actually works out, but I, what? <laughs> Bananas. Explain that to me. Maurice, no, he's trying, to, he's trying to get queen takes knight, knight to oh. d6, potentially 
hit the c4 bishop but is it correct because white will always have tactics uh we see a bar the engine bar saying it's dead even so apparently it is correct and yeah what do you do see that that's you have the instinct i wonder if my queen b3 also ran into this idea no because after 97 i could play bishop takes e6 right and this is just gawain jones for you b5 is not a move that i was considering at all it's a like clear pawn sacrifice, but he takes on d5. His idea is knight d6. So if you take with the rook, knight d6 hits the queen, hits the bishop. That's a problem. So you probably have to take with the bishop on d5. And then there's knight d6 or knight d4, and the c2 pawn is hanging, the b2 pawn is weak. What a sequence. Beautiful, beautiful moves. A5 just mixed it up. White was definitely getting in control of that position, but that move A5 followed by B5 really mixed it up. And now we have this sharp game. Black is down a pawn, but it looks like he will get it back. Queen to a6. He still has that pin, Robert, on the knight on d6. So rook c4 can be met by rook d6. But that right. also, that just looks like things are being traded off after you take and then take on b2. They are. So I actually have a rook c4, rook d6. Can I play queen c7 and just say, I'm not taking your rook. I'm going queen c7 and going for your c2 pawn. He, well, he says, what are you talking about? Let me just take that. And this petering out. Yeah, exactly. Beautiful moves. This is this kind of draw, Robert. You can't blame the players, right? And yeah, they, I, don't, they, I don't know if we will see one, but I'm with you, Maurice. I mean, they, they tried. They really went for it. Right. More balance now in this position. Again, it's it's also not over yet. That pawn on C, that pawn on C three is about to drop. White does have a strong bishop on that uh, that H uh, six square, but White had to spend a tempo playing H three. So what's the deal with this C pawn? What if we just take it? And he has. And don't play bishop d2, I don't think, because there's rook d1, which pins the bishop, and you can't even protect. So bishop d4 played instead. All right, I like yeah, that going for the f2 pawn. You should never even be one. thinking about that. Black is for choice now. Forget about the draw. Black is up a pawn, and he's got to be thinking, I want to win this game. How does he do it? He starts with queen f6 with a threat to f2. G5, can... G5 traps the bishop. Beautiful, beautifully done. Excellent. Well, you can't play queen h5 to save the bishop. Black's pieces are all connected. The bishop on d4 is defended twice so the queen can leave, and there's nowhere to go. That's I knew Gawain Jones was a good choice. This guy is just electric. That This game was beautiful. One last hope. I think queen f6 should get it done, and it is has been played as a mate threat on f2, and taking f6 did nothing because bishop took in guards, and now, now you're just toast bishop b6 for starters yeah trade rooks rook f3 a little hope oh, a little hope uh just rook smashed D1. after queen a1 gawain jones that what nice. an absolute monster there. That, that was nice a5 b5 mix it up white probably should have taken you know drawish kind of position but it didn't work out so gawain is up now with the big boys you're drawing but gawain just joined them now are we watching jeffrey's game now we're watching uh, Artemia play against Lequang Liam. They're in a time scramble. Well, I guess Lequang doesn't have time and White's this winning. Is like, this is over. Yeah. You're losing Two. all your pawns. The knight is on the perfect square and that's going to be that. Yep. All of them go. So we see a win for Artemia. So he's fighting. He's fighting it out at the top. And ooh, a rook versus knight ending here where White's down on the clock as well. So king a6, take on a5, game over. Too bad there were no tricks there. I was trying to find one. Oh, forget the tricks now. <laughs> that <laughs> ended all tricks by sacrificing. Very smart play by Black there. That's how you do it. Control the finish. And this one, Black is in big trouble. But clock is deep. Uh oh. <laughs> got him. He got mm. him. Mm. Mm. Just in the mm. clock. It's so funny because our, our first instinct as commentators is always to look at the board. And then you look at the clock. Like, oh, two no, seconds. You gotta look at the clock. No, yeah. the clock is part of the game. It's blitz. Oh, let's see what's going on. Oh, there's an extra queen. And white only has 1.2 seconds left, but black has the same. So should be a win for the queen. Uh, uh, yeah. Got him. <laughs> got him. <laughs> Barely got him. Oh. <sighs> All right, so we're going to get the next round. I'm just looking at the results from, and the standings. Wesley, he must have won his game while Hikaru drew, and he's in clear first place. Let's uh, continue. I don't even know where to go. How did Jeffrey do? I honestly didn't see his game. Is he is he out of the top? Again, did Gwen join the top? 
Jeffrey won his game as well. So oh yes. wow, that's what I'm talking about. The guy that means now it's a it's a hotter race. If you just were trying to draw your way through it, then there are people who just jumped. So that's why we're focused on those guys because they need to win their games constantly. They do indeed. And so Jeffrey at nine and a half points, he's not on the standings list because of his tie breaks must be worse, but he is playing Jostrom here, who you see on screen uh, there. So he can leapfrog him, of course, with a win. White's position is definitely better. Look at the quality of pieces. Bishop 27, not so good. Bishop 104, more out in the open. So White controls the shots thus far. But Maurice, I get frustrated sometimes at, in these positions because I know I'm better, but I don't know how to prove it. Well, there's a lot of patience involved. So the problem is Black always finds some little moment to play this move D5 just when you can't really stop it. At the moment, it is being stopped. So the question is, and I was going to say, do you want to play for F4 and then move the queen over to F3? He's put his queen on F3 first. This kind of situation, much more solid. And I would say here, Robert, this is where you don't know what to do when you're white because you wanted to play for E5 at some point, but now you can't. Yeah, it makes it difficult. And I do want to say, I yes, I have seen that Wesley So made a very quick draw. I am ignoring it. I'm pretending it didn't happen. So let me just... We know why he did. <laughs> yeah, he's but just... tomorrow is knock, knockout matches, right? It's knockout. Right. So we, we know it's going to be... You cannot take draws anymore because it doesn't make any sense. So we know that we're going to have that kind of excitement. Whew. Whoa! <laughs> Knight D5, a little sex appeal. Of course, Rook to C8 stops that instantly. But still, it's on the board. We like when moves like that happen. And, and it just keeps it there. Because if you take the E-pawn takes and there's problems down the line with the Rook on E8 hanging. So instead, we see this transition. Maurice, this is a good transition for White with the C4, E4, Meroxy bind type of structure. D5 is not happening anytime soon. That was well done. That was absolutely well done. A little extra something. And now, once again, Black has to respect White's play. And F4 looks like it could happen at any moment, Robert. I mean, I would have liked to have done it right there even. And Black would like to play Bishop takes H6 and put the Bishop where the Queen is, in a sense, to uh, start pinning things here. But that's not easy to accomplish. You have to make a move like Queen H5, but then it's too obvious what you're going for. So, Maurice, what do you make of this Queen on H6? It looks really odd to me. You know the answer to your own question. <laughs> queen you on know, H6 but, but it, it might not doesn't be that bad. belong there. It could be okay. No? I, I, the issue, the real issue is, does White have a sequence, right? That's what you want. Does White have a sequence? with f4 because f4 is coming see now the moment the queen is going to go to the g7 this is a really important moment in the game is there an f4 knight f5 robert f4 knight f5 f4 queen g7 i mean knight f5 can i get away with that um yeah i guess if the queen goes g7 you would be able to throw in the knight f5 that's kind of nice good idea oh my gosh e5 what's happening here takes pawn takes it's protected on e5 he's trying to blast through e6 at some point. Okay, that's a good plan. Absolutely. So Bishop has to go to G5. Yep. He gets a tempo on the rook. The rook goes to F3. That's a semi-open file now. And I don't I don't lie. I don't know. That E pawn is not going anywhere. And so this this idea of the queen going to G7, but now that your queen is saying, I'm not going to G7, I'm staying on H6. <laughs> I might go to G7 a little bit later, but now my bishop is bishop and queen along this long diagonal. But what will happen to this e-pawn on e5? Queen is not going to f8 instead. Yeah, retreating move here. And that's a great question because that e5 pawn is bad. The bishop on h2 defends it. So that's the good news. But it's an isolated pawn. Can't be pushed anytime soon. So I actually like Black's position right now. And it's about even on the clock. So Jeffrey needs to speed up. The bigger problem as well is your knight on d4 has zero place to go. c2 is the only square. You don't want to put it there. It looks awful. No. But what else are you supposed to do? And also, there's going to be some kind of trade on D1. Your pieces aren't harmonized. I'm not feeling this. White White has weak pawns, B3 and E5. He's now trying to chase this knight. It'll naturally go to E6. And now he's managed to trade off pieces. He's the only one, though, with a weakness in this position. Oh, switch that. He's hoping B7 becomes a weakness that he can work with. Yeah, this was an interesting trade. And he went before because, as you said, Maurice, the knight had nowhere good to go. So let me just trade it off the board. And bishop mm -hmm. e7, c5. Just like close down the position. Plays b5. He's trying to go b6 in the future. Bishop on g1 will hit now the b6 pawn that black put there. Black's position mm -hmm. is ultra solid, though. I'm liking black's position in terms of solidity. Queen takes e6. 
Really didn't do anything, but here comes that bishop hoping to get into the game. Queen e8 makes sense. All right, so I probably start thinking about king h2 or maybe any, any, I don't like my king on the, the back rank here because I'm looking at the bishop on c5. It's so powerful. Yeah, the problem for black is how to penetrate this position. He's got great play. He might might have wanted to play like an f6 at some point, but how does he get it going? And he's he's reversed it, Ooh, and he's allowed the queen to attack the d8 square. Bishop e5 doesn't work. No, it does not. Just Bishop rook, rook e5 e also doesn't work because of the rook d8 threat. And he's a oh no, he blundered an e6, Robert. Yes, he blundered he e6, and now that's going to cost him. Wait, what? He's going to take him b6. He just won the pawn, and now it's an endgame up, clear pawn up. Oh, wait, there's a mating net, though. Watch out for rook c1. He had g3. He saw it coming. He did see it coming, but now this looks like you're not. Whoa, he made a waste move. He's in time pressure, playing fast, hoping to survive this Ooh. one. And he allowed bishop takes b6, but there's a pin. Rook takes h4. Just take the pawns. And blast yes. went on time. Oh my Black god! Managed to get out of that one. Unbelievable. Close. Close to a mating net. No time, and Jeffrey loses, and it is mm. Martinez with the win. Heartbreak, heartbreak. E six when the bishop was hanging. Could he have played? Could you go back? Sure. There was an. I thought he had blundered e six and e seven. I think he had that. You're right. Uh, let me pull that up right here. He went e six, rook c four, e seven, trying to remove the rook and promote. I yeah, so if you play rook takes, I play rook h8 check and I promote. If you play rook e4, I play – no, but what about rook e4? How do you refute this one? Because I thought bishop bishop to d6, but bishop e5 check. Ooh, that's nasty. You're trying to trade off the bishop so the rook is stuck protecting the pawn. So maybe exactly. I throw g3 first, and that way I kind of gain a move. because now oh, and bishop e5 checking. is not possible, and yeah, that would get the job done. There bishop we go. Move. He missed e7. Oops. Hey, we're going to see a draw how quickly, Maurice? <laughs> How quickly? Let's, let's count. Let's count. Let's see. No, I don't want to count a draw. I don't want to count draws. I I'm don't. Look, I'm looking at the time. I just want to see if they'll even play five moves. Okay, five. Hey. That's it. We're only giving them five moves. That's uh, two. That's three. <laughs> I think That's they're going to play. I think he might play. Right. Hey, we might get a game, but they're already going to qualify. So maybe we should move to people who aren't. Lots of draws have already happened, though. I see that uh, Artemiev and uh, Fedoseyev drew, Andrekin and Nepo drew. These guys are still playing, though. Good for them. I'm so proud. So proud. Robert, look at the position. <laughs> this is so drunk. Let's move elsewhere. This is so equal. It's a, it's a okay, I found a position I like, and you're going to like it, too. Oh, but they're out of contention. No, that means Gawain Jones lost some games. Okay, we can't look here anymore. Never mind. Sorry, I like All right, who's in, who's in contention? Can we find it? This here we go. Let's go to, to again. That's, that's Amin Tabatabaev with the white pieces taking on uh, Shugirov. They both have 10 points. They both need a win at this point. Nice. To, uh, that's what in. we want. Some blood. And G4. Ooh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> go for uh, it. You need to win. You make the bishop, aggressive move. You go for it. Bishop D3, Knight G5 type of ideas. And then, of course, you can go into E5. But Indeed. these are the type of moves, Maurice, where you could honestly be upset later in the game that you went G4 because those pawns do not go back. Uh, I'm not feeling upset in any way, shape, or form. We're going for it. Although this trade seemed absolutely unnecessary. Why now? Was going nowhere. Yeah, well, that bishop couldn't move. So bishop why just rush couldn't that move. decision? Like, why, why did you need to trade? He didn't. Like, he could have made any other move. He could have put bishop d3 first. And then he takes and goes a4. He could have played a4 before taking. The bishop exactly. couldn't go anywhere. Exactly. Let, him play, let the guy play h6. He's annoyed as ever by your knight on g5. Let him waste the tempo. Now he just knows exactly what to do. That's Although a lesson this, intention, right? This, though, is a pawn sacrifice. A5, I guess, knight d7 will be played. And there'll be rook b8 at the end, trying to take back mm -hmm. on b2. The king in the center. Not so thrilled there. Yeah, now I'm feeling your take my pawn back from g4. I, I don't understand why he played the way he did. And now he's trying to... See, when you play g4 and a4, they don't go together. That's bad math. Right, like you're not playing G four, so you can play A four. I, I I don't see that in chess. You're playing yeah, on those two wings that way. They just don't combine. There are times where there's like a principle of two weaknesses. You need to create a second avenue of attack, but not here. And what I'm looking at, Maurice, surprisingly, is the H four square. I'm envisioning. Oh, not anymore. But I thought the knight would reroute itself and try to get to the H four square because that's the downside of playing with like G four. The dark squares around the white king could be very weak, in particular H four. He's got to put his king on G two. 
King F2, uh, King F1 to G2. Trying to trade queens right now. Mm, that eight pawn looks tempting, doesn't it? But I guess the knight gets trapped out here. Is that the point? So if he looks that uh, way, takes, takes, knight a4, there's b3, and the knight has to go to b2, but it doesn't get out. So you just move your bishop, no, rook b1. This. Thank you for your knight. All right. So he backed his queen up. He did indeed. And and he offered his a pawn as well. But now, man, I, I I'm I'm a little bit scared for white. We're on the same page here, Maurice. Here comes that queen h4 at some moment soon. And oh, look whoa, at Mike. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> uh, get on your horses, pushing pawns. But the knight will go to e4 with no problems at all for black. Black's position is definitely for choice with no weaknesses whatsoever. Can black make any progress, though, as we see the knight is going to e4. And I, I got to say, I'm not feeling white. Nope. This, not in the slightest. Now you're stuck guarding your weakness on h4. The issue is, does black have any pawn breaks though? He's like, look at this queen shifting, preparing f6. Also the queen b4 check idea, b, b3 is hanging. And finally this king moves, but here comes rook f8 and mm -hmm. f6 is coming. Oh yes, it is. And open it all, oh, just play it. You just have to, there's no Push alternative to f6. No question about it. And now the king, can he, does he have to play? Whoa, did he just play h5? He's trying to go hg6, but isn't there rookie three stuff? Or he just took back. Look at him. I'm looking at tactics. He's like, yeah, whatever. I don't believe in your opening of the h file at all. And now the king has to go back this direction. How do you get it though? This this is I, not very clear. I steal d4. No, it's you're a greedy ball. man. You are a greedy man. He said play queen f6 you know there's a queen h3 or queen h2 waiting to be played at some point maybe queen h2 but not yet as we noticed rook to h4 but i'm starting to think black played a little bit slowly put a rook on the i was going to say the second rank guard f2 and uh there's no queen c7 oop i'm liking this <laughs> i'm liking what just happened now we're gonna go to h5 I am definitely feeling like White feels he made a lot of progress. And the Petrosian King March, getting the king over to the queen's side, away from the action while you are hammering at the opponent's sorry. king. And, uh, so, sorry, what was that? <laughs> I mean, I'm lauding this guy's play. And now <laughs> he's brought his king back. This is anybody's game, Robert. Yeah, I think it's going to be Black's game, though, because, oh, watch out. Okay, queen is a very prudent move. Queen b2 check, watch out. That's a big threat. It's easier to play black somehow, isn't it? Just start pushing things sooner or later. Whoa, a rook g8, I, a queen g8 idea. But black is definitely seeing all of that. The only difference, the only problem for black now is the rook. On, isn't there rook f2 check? I was going to yep. say, now the rook, now, that was the critical pawn. And now rook the rook h3, h3 check. Oh. And now that rook is in the game. Rook c3 or rook c7. Rook, oh, that's it. You lost Give your girl. Your and now give me your rook and oh, give me the other rook. <laughs> it, just, it just went Pac-Man, just like eating everything there. So we're yeah. down the stretch. That was a that was win for Shigeru and very important win. I think he, what did he get in? I um, didn't even check. Yeah, he looks like he's in 13th place. And okay, well, what's this? It says 01. It's already calling the result, but. Uh, rightfully so. Resin, why do you, how do you play until this point and then resign? <laughs> you say, you say, oh, you know, the guy knows the technique. Wow, <laughs> amazing. Okay, I resign now. Uh, we have one final game at Parham here with the white pieces actually losing. And uh, that just will seal That's the hopeless. deal. Yeah. And, you know, it's only right that the final game we look at, Maurice, is a queen and a rook ahead. This has happened so many times today. Oh my goodness, and he could have taken once, and now he's taken and wait, black made... is two seconds. You better find it. Okay, he got and it. And he managed somehow to show the technique in that position. Oh, well, we're gonna take our final quick break, and when we return, we will confirm our top 16 players. The tournament does come to a conclusion. So stay tuned, everybody, to see who plays in Super Swiss Sunday.
and we have our 16 qualifiers for tomorrow's knockout. Maurice, many familiar faces on the list, right? I love this list. It's going to be fighters everywhere. It's cool that Park Nananda got in for sure. It's good to have a young face. Of course, you got the bosses, the Wesley Sos, the Maxime Vashila Graves, uh, the Fedosevs. I mean, these are just great, great names. And Drakin as well. So it's going to be quite a battle. Nepo, come on. What, what more could you want than to have some dynamic names in what should be a dogfight of a finish? Oh, it's going to be awesome. And kudos to Renato Terry, an international master, but he's a uh, blitz specialist in a sense from Peru. Two players from Peru qualifying, not a country that is often associated with like – extreme chess talent but they have so many good players there they have uh, some up-and-coming talents you know jorge cory for example uh he's young still very strong in the high 2600 so it's great to see that and in addition to all of the mainstays you, know, you mentioned uh, these people we expect to see akaru wesley mvl nepo of course they're going to find their way to the top but we have some not outsiders per se but people who want to make their mark it's interesting, the top two players are Wesley and Ikara from the United States, but nine of the qualifiers, count them, nine out of 16 are coming from Russia. <laughs> they, <laughs> they were like, we are still bosses at this game. So it's a big Russian contingent trying to take down the top two players who are the two Americans. And we say the top two players, we're talking about finishing wise, because actually Nepo is higher rated than Wesley in classical chess. So sure. he won't, he'll be like, what do you mean top two? I'm the highest boss here. I'm the strongest player. But we are talking blitz and we are talking about this result from this event that Nepo performed in good fashion, but Wesley in sterling fashion coming up with 12 points. Clear first by himself. And we stayed on the correct game down the stretch there because Shigirov was the second to last qualifier there. We saw him win that crazy game by winning all of his opponent's pieces. So he qualifies, sneaks into the field. And what does the field look like? What's the event going to be like tomorrow? As you see on the format card here, day two, in the round of 16, they will play two games of five minutes plus one second increment, followed by two games of three plus one. And then finally, five games of one plus one bullet. So these matches will all be taking place at once. And then I believe that there will be a staggered matches in the quarters, the semis, and finally the final, where there will be an increase in the number of games. It's very important that you have staggered matches. Is it in the quarters or only in the semis and the finals? Uh, in the quarters be... as well, it's going to be staggered matches. Quarters as well. Wow. Okay. Well then we're in for it. We're going to get to watch matches, tell the storyline as well of how it's going, see the ups and the downs, see the blunders, see the tears. That's what we want. And we want, we don't want to miss any of that action. So I like that. I like that, that it's going to be staggered a little bit longer day, but probably end in about four hours. So that's plenty of a time to enjoy it, but also short enough. It's chess. So short enough for us to, uh, have it run. And I think it's going to race really quickly, Robert. I don't think it's going to go slowly in any way, shape, or form. Definitely not. Today was a bit hectic because people were flagging. You know, we saw some crazy results, uh, very unexpected things occurring. But tomorrow, with the increment, I think the players will feel a little bit more in their element. But for now, Maurice, hey, we had a fun day here. At least I did. I hope you get that slice of pizza. <laughs> now it's like dinner time. I probably should eat a meal <laughs> and save the pizza for another day. But yes, I had fun with you as well, Robert. Now we can't complain. We can't say, oh, man, we never did commentary together. Now we've done it twice. Like, <laughs> it's, it's become normal. And I look forward to doing it again tomorrow with you. You say that right now. You'll probably be sick of me by tomorrow's end. But it is great, of course, commenting with you, Maurice. And thank you to everybody who's been tuning in, who has been watching whatever the platform. We appreciate you in our audience. But for now, the time's up. We'll be back tomorrow for the Speed Chess Championship Super Swiss. And we also will have the Junior Speed Chess Championship tomorrow before the SCC Super Swiss knockout. So lots of chess in store for you. Please stay safe, be well, and enjoy the rest of your day. Good night, all.